Guys, <laughs> this is the end. <laughs> Guys, I decided to go live without anyone. <laughs> Unfortunately, guys, that's life. You have to get used to it, guys. Anything can happen in life. But I wanted to say something. I still I forgot. Guys, just woke up 10 minutes ago after the beans and realized that YouTube no longer exists. <laughs> but anyway, guys, welcome, everyone. Our guest, Matt Jackass Retro. He went on to another planet, guys, with Buster. <laughs> and Lisa also, guys. So what you're seeing in the chat, guys, is not Lisa anymore. <laughs> it's Melissa. <laughs> guys, welcome, everyone. I'm not going to take your time today, guys, that long. I mean, everyone is busy, guys. Welcome to Unprofessional Life, guys, once again. Uh, in the uh, beginning of April, before solar eclipse, Matt Jackass Retro said, guys, that he is getting ready for solar eclipse. He has to go to the bathroom, guys, with the glasses on. So without further ado, guys, we have to start getting ready. Because Andy Sometta, welcome. Matt Bearded Pocketuber, welcome. Alisa, welcome. <laughs> Guys, without, without further ado, guys, everyone has a busy life. You know what's important nowadays, guys? What not? What not is more important than any lives, guys. So, guys, without further, further ado, we're going to start getting ready, guys, for solar eclipse. So, we, <laughs> we're going to have to get ready soon, guys, because, you know, let me just check to make sure we got Lisa in the house, guys. Lisa, decide, Lisa told me that I have to do a live in solar eclipse glasses, guys, because my eyes are not good anymore. Cannot see anything anyway. So, <laughs> guys, Only you can make the rock those out like that. Yeah, so the thing about it is it's very important. But before you go to watch solar eclipse on Monday, make sure you get ready. You have to practice. Sit at your computer with, <laughs> with glasses on all day. Before you go outside, guys, don't look at the sky <laughs> for three days. <laughs> so we're going to do the show in uh, solar eclipse glasses today, guys. The problem is, for some reason, the glasses are kind of messed up a little bit. You cannot see anything in them. It says Medical King made in China. I think what happened was when it was made in China, guys, that was for solar eclipse when it was back in the day in China. So the glasses actually are no longer good, guys. I have to go get prescription for them. So Lisa, you're gonna have to talk. You're gonna have to talk to the audience today, to the chat. Oh, I am. Gonna, do I? I'm gonna feel like a jackass retro right now because we're gonna be very unprofessional again, again, guys. <laughs> we have, I have to actually I wore those glasses today, guys, while driving. Couldn't see anything. Now I cannot know like exactly what happened. I don't have a car. <laughs> you'll get arrested you get arrested when you drive on those guys you don't uh drive in solar eclipse glasses because you're not gonna see nothing just look at the sky all the time without looking at on the road <laughs> so let me take them off guys for now because we have to make sure they work lisa how you been uh running around with chicken the head cut off kind of thing you Duncan, know, the usual day. Duncan VR, welcome. Duncan actually left a chat message yesterday, guys. Guys, I actually wanted to read the comments in the chat with those glasses, but for some reason, they're like not working. Let me try another one, guys. Let's see. I got uh, <laughs> I got three more. We're going to make sure, guys, they work before we wear them. What so you do? do jack them, the whole container from the petrol? Guys, we, got, we have to get used to wearing those types of glasses from now on <laughs> we're gonna walk around like that after the solar eclipse guys i will wear them for a month <laughs> i will not take them off i'll tell people that i looked at the eclipse without any glasses and now i cannot see nothing 
But anyway, Duncan, welcome. We got beautiful people in the chat, guys, that were actually on time today. We got Andy Sometta. Lisa was actually here before me, guys, on this beautiful Saturday night in Ohio, actually. We got 55 degrees today. It was mostly sunny, guys. So bearded pocket tuber met in the house. Uh, Michelle, like in 19 from Strongsville, Ohio. We got simply Shane Anigans, Shane in the house. We got Ken in the house. Uh, who is not Roman, guys. See, he says every time, hey to everyone that's not Roman. So, guys, hey, everyone who is not Ken SSK promo, uh, DOG, guys. Uh, DOG is very important. Ken, if you... Actually, guys, Ken did a great job with Jill on a whatnot. Couple whatnots already under the belt. Ken was actually... Yesterday, I stopped by Ken. And Jill actually currently is a Philly Flippers so whatnot, I think. Because I saw her there. But uh, Ken, actually, I think telling a story in your whatnot is what I'm going to do on my whatnot. I will actually do whatnot without just selling anything. I'll just tell stories about different parts of Cleveland teams and stuff like that. So that's going to be exciting, guys. And then I will sell one item. <laughs> so whoever, whoever is interested in that, stop by at my whatnot coming soon, guys. I will sell those glasses, too, after the eclipse. You just need to make sure, guys. I saw an eye doctor. He said after the eclipse, I have to wear them nonstop. <laughs> Kim, welcome. Kim T in the house. Mike in the house. The crazy card in the house. Matt got his sixth booster and left uh, his this dimension. Uh, Mike, uh, Matt actually is a busy guy. He's been on YouTube already for over uh, 40 years. So he's very busy in his um, uh, basement. He's currently, he told me he'll be, he'll stop by, but he didn't say well. <laughs> yes, we're on professional life. So anything that you see that's happening with any guests or anyone who's supposed to be here, actually, it's all a fluke. <laughs> it's never, we never Pretty do much. anything. Yes, we never do anything as promised, guys. That's actually going to be kind of situation with my whatnot. I will advertise something that I will sell, but it's in reality, I won't. <laughs> Marie, welcome. Welcome, everyone. Guys, I appreciate you all stopping by. Um, so Ken and Jill did a whatnot. And currently, actually, guys, uh, a lot of uh, YouTubers slash resellers are doing whatnot. So whatnot has become part of daily life right now. So I decided since everyone is doing whatnot every other day, I'll do whatnot twice a day. <laughs> every day, twice a day, guys, in the morning and in the evening. That way, People hopefully, come just to hear you ramble. So, yeah, that way, hopefully, nobody gonna buy nothing. <laughs> Woody in the house. Woody was the best name, guys. I decided I will change my name to Woody now. <laughs> now we're being um, so Jill is here. Jill in the house. Jill was actually in Philly Flipper. Uh, what not moderating? Nicola Presto in the house. Actually, guys, Nicole, uh, there was a lot of um stuff going on in the state of uh, actually New York City and also other states, New York, uh, Pennsylvania, close like New, I think all the states near New York, I think Maryland, um, maybe other ones, I don't remember exactly, but they had small earthquake. So hopefully everyone, your families are doing good. I mean, hopefully nothing uh, broke if you live in those states where this 4.8 magnitude guys. It so was actually, I would say it was not really like, um, I would say it's not really a bad one, but I would not say it's a light. It's like it, uh, people kind of felt it. So 4.8, you can feel it. So well, I was surprised. Roman, you weren't living here yet in 1986 here in Ohio, in Northeast Ohio, January 31st, I think. We had a 5.0. I was in school and I thought the kid behind me was shoving my chair with his feet. And then the teacher's desk just when it started. Okay, sliding. listen, now you're going to have to make me again wear the glasses. Well, I'm just saying, you <laughs> missed the yes. one. Ohio got one. Listen, now that uh, you told me all the stories Why about do you, look so now... you got your mushrooms. You got your mushrooms now, don't you? Guys, That's let's what those do... glasses uh, are. Uh, actually, I read on the instructions when solar eclipse is going to be here on Monday, I have to wear two pairs. So we're going to have to wear two of them to make sure that there is going to be enough protection, guys. 
as you know you have to always oh. double back yeah, yep. you have to, yes. yes always double back because you never know if uh, one pair will help so two pairs guys will definitely do the trick so where are two of them just in case <laughs> it's do, only do, 8 11. <laughs> yes do, do double begging because you know someone told me back in the day that double begging may help if you don't do it on time you have to uh, do everything on time i guess so i don't know guys uh make sure <laughs> always be overprotected not underprotected. you have to be you have to be protected guys just to make sure double triple sometimes depends um but then you like won't enjoy it help. <laughs> Hope everyone is well. So, guys, if you live, uh, if you experienced earthquake, that's something uh, that actually recently, for some reason, there were uh, another. There was another one in Taiwan, which was much stronger. And uh, hopefully, I mean, it's not going to go through this cycle when uh, the earthquakes start happening all of a sudden, all over the Earth before solar eclipse. See, guys, solar eclipse is coming on Monday. An earthquake started to happen, so hopefully we're not gonna be uh, looking at the end of the world. You know, you never know. <laughs> now everyone went left to make to pack up. <laughs> so Ken and Jill did a great job on whatnot, guys. So that's a good thing, guys. I, I actually appreciate people doing hard work on whatnot. It actually takes, I mean, some courage. I actually missed Anthony's whatnot today because I fell asleep after the beans again. I was really tired walking around there for six hours that i barely actually gotten home i wanted to sleep in the car guys because it was i get tired already guys I think i'm getting older now that's it like tommy bernard guys see tommy bernard in the house guys Tommy bernard is also old guys so kind of getting old guys we cannot uh, do enough enough resellings anymore in our age so i don't know what to do now guys we have to find like help so we're gonna start looking for help guys to help uh, sourcing, listing, shipping. Lisa says she may help sometimes. <laughs> Maybe. Most feels good. Is. good yeah. Or bad. Chad in the house, guys. Chad, welcome. Appreciate you all guys stopping by. Um, Easy Pickens in the house. Chris in the house. Chris, welcome. Appreciate you stopping by, guys. Um, yeah, so we hopefully, guys, I, I messaged Matt. Matt knows, actually, that we have a live today. But uh, he said he's busy. His busy schedule, guys. Sometimes he has a lot of things that he has to do. So he said he'll be here soon, guys. Maybe ne next year. <laughs> but it's, it's okay, guys. It's normal for us to be like that. To, this behavior actually is uh, kind of getting, uh, what do you say? How do you say it, Lisa? It gets like, uh, um, not like regular type of behavior. It's not something surprising for our life, guys. So. I was surprised that I showed up. Actually, guys, every week I'm surprised that I show up after the beans. It's kind of unusual. I for show me. up. If, uh, guys, if Lisa shows up next week by herself, guys, you will know most likely I'm going to be after solar eclipse injured <laughs> and not going to show up. <laughs> I will you just will figure out how to get an injury. Guys, I will call Lisa and tell her that I cannot say anything. That solar eclipse to blame. I'm going to take an attorney and just sue solar eclipse, guys. <laughs> So we're going to have to file some kind of lawsuit against solar eclipse next week, guys. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> because it's not natural, guys. We cannot let moon cross over the sun. We kind of cannot tell the moon to do that. So we're going to have to file lawsuit. So we'll see. Maybe we'll get paid. <laughs> uh, luckily, Ro Roman realized that his 3D porn goggles work before he spent. <laughs> Mike, actually, I don't know, man. We have to test them out. Uh, maybe. There is some kind of issue. It says medical. Maybe it's like not for solar eclipse. Maybe it's for some other purposes. I don't know. But uh, I read uh, that uh, they will help, uh, like prevent you to go blind during solar, solar eclipse. So I don't other know. Other things Mike. make you go blind. I don't think it's the glasses. Uh, it's a quality, Mike. It's a kind of a quality of glasses that kind of wor worrisome for me. Like I don't know. They're made of some kind of paper. I don't know if the moon. Uh, when it's gonna cross over the sun it's not gonna like this kind of quality guys so <laughs> i'm gonna have to call a company and tell them you have to start making the metal ones you know out of maybe silver with like gold uh, lenses so i don't know guys so <laughs> it's gonna be difficult um duncan says hi roman how now some ebay buyers leave other sellers negatives uh not me but the buyer states in the negatives they want a refund be alert 
eBay for business no already know that uh, Duncan, that's that's actually um in my opinion Duncan that's been happening already for a while so I mean most of uh, sellers know this kind of situation and uh, uh, that's going to be happening I think uh, all the time because um this type of uh, behavior is kind of uh, something that eBay is known for like they strive on uh, this type of behavior from buyers so if buyers want to scam live negative they will do it and eBay most likely in rare situations they'll remove something but that's like I don't know if you pay attention to that too much I think a lot of sellers kind of don't pay attention I mean so the most important part is going to be always something that sells uh, has good sales rate and sells uh, no, regularly right. sells regularly not sell something that I do all the time that is not selling so in that situation it's like uh, people will still buy uh, buyers will still go and buy and uh, negative feedbacks there are a lot of them that people have some I talked about it I think that power sellers have like uh, during like maybe months on average some power sellers may have like 50 negatives I mean that's uh something depends on what they sell they sell multi-quantity items and they get negatives I think it's just something they don't pay it's a similar situation as with businesses if you go to a restaurant to eat even like uh, fast food places there are a bunch of people who leave uh, bad reviews and I mean still people go a lot to all those restaurants and buy I mean get food they don't I mean pay attention to that so that's kind of um, uh, in my opinion situation where nothing you can control it's kind of out of control because eBay controls it so as a seller you can only do what you can do I mean provide good customer service so if you can good descriptions if people read titles if people read most people now as you know cannot even get bother to teach them to read yeah but yeah Duncan that's the thing we're not gonna go into detail but that's gonna be happening and uh uh eBay doesn't care too much about it because they know who they are and we as sellers <laughs> also know who they are so knowing that it's kind of something that you cannot control and you have to use our platform to, to sell if you want to use our platform because they're not gonna care much if you leave or if you go to do some other uh to some other uh, platforms because uh, currently I would not say there are excellent platforms out there except maybe what not <laughs> it's a it's like a big question mark but I think uh what not currently and returns in my opinion you can guys put in the chat returns and what not are very limited um I don't know like uh, we can ask a lot of different sellers on whatnot how many returns they get per month I think it's very low amount it's very low probably maybe one two if that I think one would be closer so and whatnot actually doesn't do any feedback type of situation like they do have star rating you can leave like a mess like a review but I mean it is what it is they don't do it like eBay does where your percentage drops off um he will see you Jill, in about 20 minutes yeah there you go I'd, I'd even tip for stories um yeah Jill actually is multitasking guys she's on different whatnots uh today moderating thank you for the tip the show was so short didn't have to thank her yeah Ken actually I was uh yesterday when you went um live on whatnot I went to our local Goodwill regular one uh to <laughs> To check out if prices have dropped but uh, in reality prices actually changed and went up so <laughs> it's just crazy how it is goodwill bedwill uh decided that um it's time to raise the prices again guys yeah. so they did on closing yesterday their prices went up on by 50 cents so i don't know they decided it's time to be bedwill i think they cha will change to bedwill soon guys oh, like my now? like my icon <laughs> I thought, uh, Roman, I thought you got a high paying job as a nuclear scientist. You still need it. <laughs> Man, I wish. Duncan, a nuclear scientist, actually. You know, it's um, 
being a scientist, I think if you're just a scientist and you graduated with a great degree from college with like a PhD, in that case, you're going to be sad because what you're going to do is a scientist, they go around, do like uh, conferences, talk to people, fly around different parts of the world. So it's a good, it's a good job, man. But uh, it depends on what kind of scientist are you. There are a lot of different ones. Uh, high, high bubbles, blinks, and needle things, Lisa. Bubbles. Yeah. I, bubbles. I still don't know what bubbles is. <laughs> I have explained this plenty to like you. A, it's some kind of dirty word, guys. Bubbles. No, it's I think. this little shiny stuff. It's some kind of it's some kind of international word. I don't know what it is. Just have to make them so mad they violate the policy. Down, just threaten you, refer to you as a gender. You don't identify as feedback. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much sums it up, Duncan. Uh, Tommy, yes. Tommy described for you, man, that um, all kind of in detail. So the thing is, I mean, you can always try to remove something. Will they remove it? Nobody knows. <laughs> because artificial intelligence, Duncan, doesn't know exactly how you feel because they're robots. They don't have human feelings. So if you feel kind of bad or good, Artificial intelligence doesn't understand it because they have no heart or brain <laughs> or feelings. Uh, Chad saying, uh, Wolfman Good is saying, Chad and Chris. Yes, there you go. Um, dollar bills, you own the house, guys. We, uh, my favorite, my fav one of my favorite YouTube channel names, <laughs> along with Fartsack Jack. <laughs> yeah, dollar bills, you all, by the way, tomorrow will be here in Cleveland and we'll meet up. So guys, dollar bill deal is coming with me to the beans tomorrow. So we're gonna hang out, guys. Maybe maybe we will buy something. I may I actually found uh, dollar bills, man. Today was actually a good day at the beans, to tell you the truth. Today was not bad compared to uh, rest of this week. It was not a great week, but today it was good. So sometimes at the beans also depends on uh, what kind of loads they get so today was not bad and hopefully tomorrow when you come in when we're gonna go we're gonna say uh dollar bills we're gonna tell everyone that you're dollar bills man so all the vintage kids <laughs> will know who you are just come in into the door and say i'm dollar bill you all so they're gonna run away <laughs> But I've got, see, he's got uh, my clip glasses, but I've got some 3D glasses from the theater that I can say. Yeah, you can do that. I think they're actually polarized uh, for a solar eclipse, so you can, you're going to be good. Just tell everyone that you're watching a 3D movie. If people ask that they're going to see, like, uh, some kind of glasses that are not normal, just tell them. <laughs> Me and Roman will do a ray train from Asia to Russia. Yeah, Andy, we're going to start doing whatnot. Starting next week, guys. Uh, as soon as the solar eclipse ends, guys. I will sign all the glasses. Tomorrow, when I will see dollar bills, you all, we're going to sign all the glasses, guys. And we're going to do whatnot uh, with those. I'll do them. And the dollar bills, most likely, will not mind, guys. I don't think he'll mind to sign. It's very important. The signatures, guys, is what sells, guys, and whatnot. So we have to sign. I may sign it with another name, like some kind of NBA player or some kind of NFL it doesn't matter, guys. <laughs> as long make as it your merch, fine. Roman, and, and make the tagline. You know, everybody needs one to watch this show so they don't go blind. Yes, it's okay. I mean, uh, you know what gonna, what's going to happen most likely after solar eclipse? There are going to be people calling attorneys and saying that they went blind from solar eclipse to claim something, guys. So that's going to coming up, guys, coming soon to theaters near you. <laughs> all those natural disasters, guys. You know, all those natural solar eclipse is also natural disaster. So we gotta have to watch out, make sure the sun will shine again after that. Lisa, can you imagine if solar eclipse happens and the sun will stop working? The the light bulb on the sun will. <laughs> I'd be fine will, with that. I can you, can you imagine, remember. guys, if uh, moon will cross the sun and sun will just decide that's it? I'm not gonna work anymore. I'm just gonna turn off. <laughs> We're gonna have all night always, guys. It's gonna be fun. My guest rumbles more than 4.8. Christ. See, uh, yes. that's actually Tommy. Tommy was talking about other stuff, guys, not about that kind of situation. I think he was referring to other um 
more private type of situations, guys. We're not Hanging out at Taco Bell with Krillin. We're not going to discuss it, guys, because Tommy's wife will not going to like that. So we're not going to discuss any of those 4.8 or like uh, any type of those things, guys, just in case. Did you get a mega 10 earthquake, Roman? I hope you had the, your, your rollerblades on. Me mega 10 earthquake. I actually, Lisa, I, I don't know. The thing about it is that um, Ohio actually had earthquakes a um, couple of times, uh, even when I was already here. So it was not like big earthquakes. I think it was around like same magnitude, like four point something. So, I mean, the buildings were shaking, but it is what it is, guys. So it's it's Cleveland falling off into the lake finally. Uh, awesome. Uh, yeah, thanks, Woody. I appreciate it. Woody, if you need some glasses, let me know. Uh, I'll do whatnot soon i will order more and i will do like a whatnot show with just solar eclipse glasses guys because i decided that since there's going to be solar eclipse on monday the next one probably going to be again in a month so we're going to have to use those glasses all the time so it's going to be good seller <laughs> Robo looks like an alien <laughs> i am an alien that's the thing bobby in the house kept guy in jt bobby welcome bobby actually i haven't seen in a while Bobby, yeah, hopefully you're speaking. doing good, man. Bobby, you need to come back and uh, do some kind of lives, man, because you were a really funny dude. So come back, man. Every Tommy is waiting for you, man. He was kind of putting billboards to find out where you are. <laughs> I always double back on nights. <laughs> we need a puppet guy. We miss, no, we not... miss Bobby uh, and JT. Bobby, no, we I... don't have any puppets today. I think I sold all mine. The puppets that I have uh, in other places, I'm not going to show. So, the <laughs> James, That's a good welcome. question, Cameron. Collecting chaos. Howdy, howdy, James. Welcome, Cameron. Matt said that Buster will come in earlier than him. Buster was kind of telling me that um, he was done cutting some kind of meat on this meat. I was actually prepared to do this. Uh, you know how Matt has a um, cutting board in his basement to cut those uh, boxes, and I always refer when I go to his life. I refer to it like a meat cutter, you know, that you cut meat with like a butcher. So I wanted to actually refer to that, but Matt didn't like that, I think. My wife and I experienced the earthquake. It felt like a freight train going through, but we don't have any train tracks. Guys, actually, it was a crazy kind of um, uh, situation uh, last couple months with tornadoes in, in Ohio. We don't have any tornadoes in Ohio like uh, that much. Uh, and we had like uh, two major type of um, weather systems go through within like two weeks. And tornadoes touched down near uh, southern part of Ohio. So it's kind of... Spring in Ohio. <laughs> it's kind of unusual for us to have so much severe weather already, even before uh, May. Usually it's like most of the time it's uh, somewhere like in May, maybe once a year. But now we got like... I think it happened three times already, Lisa. We, we had like uh, tornadoes close by, so I don't know. We have to move to Delaware now, guys. That's the only state that doesn't have tornadoes yet. I used to sell sleeves, Lisa. Some some make you inhuman. <laughs> don't even get take... Andy started. Crazy how you take a 10 home from the bar at, at breakfast. She's down near always three at best. See? Tommy actually knows. Uh, Tommy, when you go to the bar during solar eclipse, just wear the glasses. And uh, in case someone tries to tell your wife that you're going to meet some other women, just tell them that it's not you, that uh, nobody saw your eyes. So just kind of it's going to be some kind of situation where you can try to hide this, man, using those glasses. I don't know. <laughs> Tommy's like, no, uh, Tommy's wife is not listening to the show, guys, so hopefully. Otherwise, she's going to come down to the basement and beat them up with some kind of pen. <laughs> to six, there's a same at 3 a.m. or noon. Exactly. See, Matt knows, guys, we're going to be very polite today. <laughs> As usual. Big bro in the house. Big bro, welcome. Lisa looks pretty tonight. See, Roman is not that, thankfully. I'm not that pretty, thankfully. Thank God. <laughs> yeah, you she can get up 10 minutes before the show and look perfect. Guys, I just woke up, so it's normal. I, I don't even know where I am. Most of the time, guys, when I wake up and uh, like 10 minutes, look at my computer screen without knowing where I am, guys. It takes me about three hours to understand where I'm located. 
<laughs> uh, Wolfman Good is saying, will it, will it be full in your... Yes, it's supposed to be actually complete darkness in Cleveland. But unfortunately, guys, what they told today is that weather in Cleveland will not cooperate, I, I guess. Uh, they don't even kind of know specifically where, which exact area in Cleveland. But they supposed to be like uh, like thunderstorms or some kind of rain. So I don't know, guys, how we're going to see. Guys, I don't know how we're going to uh, be able to see the solar cliffs. I may not even wear those, guys, those glasses. I don't know. If there's going to be thunderstorms, guys, what's the point? You're not going to see the solar cliffs. So what's the point of wearing them? <laughs> the other thing doesn't make you blind unless you hit your eye with it. Yeah exactly unless you get some kind of blaster shot from the sun big, big bro knows <laughs> he was through a bunch of solar eclipses <laughs> guys but anyway i'll put the links again on the chat guys just give me some time because i don't know where i am again it's gonna take me you see i'm slow at reading comments anyway even without a guest yet but the guest said uh, hopefully he'll be here tomorrow guys when it's gonna be over so by the time we, you catch up with the chat, he'll be here. By the time I'll catch up with the chat, guys, the guest said the solar eclipse will start. So, guys, Matt is getting ready. I, he told me that when I told him it's going to be solar eclipse on Monday, he said I told him he needs glasses. So he said he has to get ready, guys. So that's going to take him probably a couple of hours, guys, to get ready. <laughs> because I told him he has to show up in the glasses into the life today. So I don't know. China would never take this opportunity to make the glasses burn holes in millions of retinas, retinas, then take over the US. That's Tommy, you actually, uh, man, I don't know, you're shooting from a high note, man, about China. China is kind of neutral. You know how China is. <laughs> China is all smart. China is always neutral. China doesn't know exactly what they need to do. They know that they're going to be neutral in any case. They were leaning kind of towards Russia a little bit, but uh, I don't think they're not leaning anywhere anymore it's because they, China is smart. China is making so much product all over the world and there are companies who buy their products and distribute to all types of stores. They don't care about any type of wars or anything. So they're kind of neutral. They know everyone relies on them. Can you guys imagine if China decides to stop um, distributing any or making any products for United States or other countries, it's gonna became became like become chaotic, guys. It's gonna be not normal. Nobody will know what to do anymore. There's gonna be shortages. <laughs> Lisa will not know what to sell anymore on her auctions on YouTube. We're not gonna have any products, guys. Goodwill bins will be empty. <laughs> I got junk with the QUE. Max is saying Max in the house. Fast talking flipper. You know there is too many flippers and pickers. One foot flipper, first talking flipper, anytime picker, nobody has ER in the end. Like I like actually how Paige does in the beginning and in the introduction. One foot flipper. See, that's a proper pronunciation, guys. So Max guys is first talking flipper. <laughs> Roman had my baby one, but he sold it to a Cleveland pawn shop. Yeah, for good money. <laughs> Heavy Helios. Salvador. Mercado in the house. Salvador, where is Matt? <laughs> Where is I'll tell friend? Cameron to go fetch him. Well, call Matt and tell him the solar eclipse has started. <laughs> tell him Buster is outside wearing sunglasses. <laughs> I think Buster, I think Matt and Buster will be watching solar eclipse together, guys, with both sunglasses. <laughs> Harry Hamston in the house. Friends, Romans, countrymen. Uh, bring, uh, blinks, how's the blinks? Uh, Lisa, Harry wants to know how blinks are going, how's the auctions? He wants to know if you oh. got any blinks. <laughs> I thought we were checking on the blinks. Oh, okay. Big bro, you look pretty tonight. See, Max is actually looking at people without uh, looking at them. That's actually kind of cool. Max, you're looking very pretty today. He's already hey. gone blind. Does he, uh, Max, does Angie know that you're looking pretty tonight or not? <laughs> Amanda in the house. He's just stopping in to say hello. Amanda Farball Flippers. Amanda, welcome. We talk with Amanda, Nicole, Paul, Kristen. Uh, Angie, Anastasia, yeah, almost Polo. every day, guys, on Marco Polos. Especially me, guys, with my Marco Polo messages take about an hour, so everyone is skipping them because they don't want to listen to my 
uh, problems uh, deep, like uh, I always talk about some kind of dirty stuff on Marco Polo. So all the women on our Marco Polo, they put me yeah. on the next. They put me on the next mod so they don't have to listen to this crap. <laughs> Uh, nice job stealing every blow mode in Delmarva dead. Uh, I think it's actually Tommy talking to Harry Hamstone because he was actually garage selling today around Tommy's house. See, that's the thing. I think when Harry Hamstone goes around and Delaware to garage sales, Tommy just shuts down all the doors and windows to make sure that uh, Harry is not peeking through the curtains to see what Tommy has or what kind of supplier he got. <laughs> he got cameras all over his house. <laughs> who stole roman sleeves man i i actually uh cut him off man i got led zeppelin i got led zeppelin to the guest representing led zeppelin one of the legendary bands as you guys know from united kingdom guys the place where the greatest bands came from originally also in my opinion one of the best bands led zeppelin is one of them guys so as you know Back in the day, whoever is younger, they would not know. Guys, I actually talked to some kids who are in their early 20s. They don't know who Led Zeppelin is or Pink Floyd because they were born already when, the, I mean, some kids know, but vintage kids actually surprisingly know. Well, it's their job. Yeah, their job, guys, to find proper uh, T-shirts, vintage T-shirts. So they only know about them, about the concert shirts. Uh, Tommy, when there's a yard pull blow most for the five bucks a piece, you got the you gotta pull the trigger. See, there you go. Harry Hamstone guys actually finds really cool stuff, guys. If you follow Harry Hamstone guys for at least 10 years, he was always finding and still finding good things. So you can learn the singer too by watching Harry because he actually knows what to look for, not me that uh, finds only some kind of unusual. <laughs> <laughs> unpredictable products guys <laughs> um amanda saying hey lisa i'm also in the past of totality allegedly with the longest duration yeah see that's the thing amanda's town and cleveland guys that's why guys dollar bills you all is gonna be here tomorrow in cleveland and uh on monday everyone will go see solar eclipse we got hotel rooms book tommy bernard is here also He'll be going with us tomorrow, guys. Tommy said, do not tell his wife that he's in Cleveland. So Tommy's wife, do not listen. He's not in Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> returns are limited, but the money is limited even more. Yeah, that's the thing about returns, actually. I mean, that's a, that's something you cannot prevent. I think the only... Uh, what do you think, Lisa? What... what? Lisa, tell me the truth. Would you start selling would you like would you like to start just selling whatnot instead of ebay how is that gonna do for you for your business guys put it on the chat how is it gonna do uh, for your business if you just decide to sell on uh, live selling platforms instead of having to have some kind of hassle selling on ebay or amazon where there are so many issues with returns scammers at least you guys will know that with live selling there is gonna be no scammers so lisa what do you think should we I start to sell or whatnot? <laughs> I just did my whatnot onboarding Thursday, and I don't know. I'm terrified. Why? You know. cannot be terrified. You're just going to show people like you're doing YouTube auctions, what you're selling, and people will bid. With me, like, guys, uh, when well, I'm going to do plan. <laughs> and you have no accent, so that's going to be good for you. See, that's, you're going to at least people want, will understand what the hell you're selling. With me, it's gonna be very complicated. I will have to show everything because uh, about 100% of people don't understand what I'm talking about. So see, it's got much more complicated for me, guys. Well, will an <laughs> accent work? I mean, I can do plenty of accents. I bought all the vintage Tommy Hilfiger shirts that I saw four years ago, and all those listings were taken down. So I donated all of them to a small local thrift store. I think that other sellers flagged. Yeah, I don't know about that actually, Chad. Maybe they are, there are a lot of different brands now that they consider possibly to be faked without any freaking knowledge. They don't, I had this issue, I, I had a video on my channel, guys. Whoever was watching my channel back in the day, two years ago, <laughs> when I did a video about uh, the product that was a board game that was taken down by eBay uh, being counterfeit. It was the first time in history that I had a 
board game taken down for being counterfeit. And then uh, they, the attorneys from that uh, board game brand uh, sent me an email and they sent me a, like a letter in mail to say that, that was cease and desist, guys. It was actual letter. And I later, I thought it was also fake. I thought it was not real, but it was actually real. They were real people. They were real attorneys. So I actually messaged them uh, that uh, I had a receipt because that game I bought at a, at a Target. <laughs> So I had the receipt for the game. So I actually emailed them the receipt from Target for the game. And then they told me that uh, actually not them. They replied to me, but they said they're going to have to someone reach out to, into eBay. And then eBay messaged me saying that I can sell it. So apparently, guys, that's the thing about it. If you communicate with them to try to prove your point, it's gonna probably not going to be easy. For all the products, guys, depending on where you get it. Because a lot of you get the stuff from garage sales, estate sales, and uh, bean stores that don't provide any receipt with the name. So it depends. Like, I was lucky maybe because I bought it at a Target. Because I used to do retail arbitrage at Target Walmart. So that's why I had receipt with the name on a receipt. But if you don't, it's going to be most likely uh, no luck, guys. I don't think it's going to be something that you will be able to win. And um, Amazon Bean Store, the Desert Sellers, I forgot her name, J Jennifer. Uh, she did a video recently about Amazon Beans, which actually I talked about. Amazon Beans are, I think, the ones that uh, have high value, a uh, volume of uh, counterfeit stuff. So may look real, but in reality, it's probably not. That's why it was rejected by Amazon, ended up at those pellets. And the pellets are sold at Amazon bean stores. So there you go, guys. Just a short, long story short, guys. <laughs> yeah, where is Krillin? And uh, Michelle is saying, oh, in Cleveland for sure, Michelle, everyone is already, the hotel uh, here nearby, uh, near me is already booked. Like there are so many cars already on the parking lot. And I think that some rooms are basically were um, given to five people at the same time, like five families. So there are five families living in the same room. <laughs> because of the shortage of the rooms guys <laughs> cleveland was not ready guys to get so many spectators to so many fans of solar eclipse guys so now cleveland is popular destination right now guys so cleveland is i think right now number one if you if people talk about cleveland in the united states so everyone is talking about cleveland guys finally after 200 years <laughs> uh when when the eclipse uh max eclipse is on probably tomorrow i think we're gonna that's why guys I, I told everyone i will start wearing glasses just in case max after the live today and go outside and glasses even though i cannot see in, in in them i will just say i'm blind you know i have a walking cane and so people will just kind of hunk from their cars if i'm going the streets they can hunk so they're not gonna hit me so i can wear the glasses walk around like that and tell them i'm like on disability was like I don't see anything. <laughs> uh, Wolfman, do you have an eBay International one? Uh, I don't. Uh, Chad, I think yeah, Chad probably will answer Tommy for you. It was 8:21. It was 20 minutes ago, guys. I'm way behind again. Guys, Matt said that he's not gonna stop by today. So sorry, guys. <laughs> I get it, Wolfman. Similar happened to me. See, that's the thing, guys, about it. It's just uh, it happens all the time, unfortunately. Uh, Michelle is saying Monday. Michelle, I, I'm not sure if it's Monday. I have to call uh, Sun uh, later today and find out when the moon <laughs> gonna cross over. If there's gonna be any delays, guys, we have to kind of uh, know for sure that uh, moon will be crossing over. We have to call in uh, and find out because there are probably <laughs> aliens <laughs> on another planet that controls us. Illuminati guys. Illuminati that control solar eclipse. So we have to call, find out if they're going to be late and people are going to start watching and it's not going to happen. We have to complain. <laughs> Get our money back <laughs> for glasses. <laughs> Luckily, I love outside of town, so I don't have to deal with the influx of people. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of people, guys. So we're going to go outside, enjoy it. Guys, enjoy the eclipse. It's not going to happen until in probably 20 more years. So uh, go outside. 
make sure you look at the directly uh, without any glasses guys so you can complain later on i didn't tell you that <laughs> be picking in the house didn't i just see you chris be picking welcome Lisa, i swear roman never paid exactly that's a max never man that's like one of the things max i tell everyone that i'm an alien so kind of uh they kind of don't understand why i'm on, like even here try to try to take me back to my planet man but uh unfortunately not enough money yes it's too expensive rocket ships it's like uh something they don't anticipate sometimes man so they told me i can live here for now <laughs> illegal alien <laughs> let me put some uh lisa so what what how was your week tell everyone i will have to put some because i feel that i'm again disrespecting a lot of our great viewers uh so i will put the links for the channels in the chat guys uh so if you don't mind so lisa can talk to you lisa don't be shy you can do it guys lisa will start her I'm own life okay. i'm too shy to speak to people <laughs> What am I going to say? What have I been doing this week? Well, like I said, I had the whatnot on boarding on Thursday, which of How course. Was it? How was uh, it? Well, my Zoom thing didn't download right. So I ended up having to take it the class again. But the lady was super nice, I got to say. And she answered a lot of questions. So that was probably the best thing about whatnot was the onboarding went well. But I've been just cleaning up around here, listing, 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 trying then not a whole lot to say just doing the grind like everybody else doing yes i really appreciate you stopping in today i'm really sorry that you were expecting mad jackass retro but it was all uh once he again guys us. once again guys those uh fake thumbnails will get me buried one one of those days guys those uh, clickbait stuff guys don't do clickbait stuff that's the thing i tell myself into the mirror all the time don't do clickbait, though, and I'm still doing it, guys, and I'm gonna keep doing it. Uh, someone told me back in the day that the only do the only way to grow a YouTube channel, guys, you keep doing clickbait. So we're gonna start from the beginning, guys, again on Sunday. We're gonna start doing all types of clickbait uh, guests. Next week, guys, uh, we're gonna have uh, Al Pacino. Uh, after that, we're gonna have uh, Jack Nicholson. After that, we have a lot of different uh, athletes, guys. We're going to have some celebrities. Tom Brady from uh, New England Patriots. We're going to have uh, Lisa. Who else is coming? I heard that uh, you talked to um, someone who is very famous, like Elon Musk, I think. You talked to him. So we got, guys, Elon Musk will be coming drop on. on me. We got uh, Bill Gates coming on with a lot of uh, stories to tell us about aliens. Uh, who else is coming? Putin, probably. Guys, he kind of doesn't like me that much. He said that I talked too much about Navalny, guys, and uh, he's not going to like that. Because he said, uh, less, he said, let's talk about any type of uh, elections. So we're, gonna, we're not going to talk about elections with him. I promise his people, guys, that uh, this uh, YouTube life is very popular uh, in Russia right now. <laughs> So we're gonna have to we have to be like very polite, guys. If Putin agrees to kind of be on our live, guys, I don't know. Uh, so we got a lot of celebrities, guys. I'm sorry. I know Matt Jackass Retro is a big celebrity, guys, but uh, compared to everyone else who is coming on soon, guys, I mean, I don't know. Maybe Matt Jackass Retro is actually more famous than Putin. So I don't know, guys. It's kind of not not polite, guys. We're not polite again. <laughs> but yeah. Hey, yeah can you just hit the private chat when you got a second i'm not gonna hit anything <laughs> caress uh, and everybody caress that thumb for guys the hit the like button because otherwise i'm gonna keep wearing those uh, solar eclipse glasses <laughs> uh, Please no. it's better than the santa though anything's better than that santa I see. I see thank you lisa lisa told me that uh, putin is not gonna be coming on our life so guys uh, I'm sorry. We were threatened directly from yes, Moscow. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I broke it to you. Putin said that I don't have enough money uh, to pay him uh, for being on this live. So, guys, we we well, we have to kind of accept our fate, guys. You know that's the thing about it. Um, and uh, unfortunately, this life we don't strive to make any money anymore because uh, we understand 
that the current, the current situation in the world, guys, demands, uh, you know, something else. It doesn't demand us to make money. So unfortunately, I have to call in all those celebrities and tell them we cannot pay anyone <laughs> again. But um, guys, uh, we decided uh, today that we're going to do some kind of other thing right now because it's going to take us uh, very long to figure out what to do because we don't have like much of following anyway. So that's <laughs> one of the big faults. Yes, one of the big faults for us is that we don't have any following anymore. And uh, we, we got we got turned down. We got turned down by a lot of uh, famous people. Unfortunately, guys, I cannot control it, guys. That's kind of a fate. That's my fate, guys. Even God told me. God came down from the sky today and said, Roman, you're fate is going to be like that you're going to be always uh you know doing this life without any guests i told you put on the banana hammock no one can say no to you in a banana hammock come on no, i mean that's normal i mean i don't mind that so guys i don't mind that kind of situation as you know it's kind of i don't shy away from telling uh, the thing how it is uh so we're gonna say hello to gravity good camera in the house kiss vintage sports loop in the house He's welcome. Actually, the guy. Guys, check out his um, and um, I always Andy. <laughs> I always want to call him them. But his uh, and Andy guys do very cool uh, live on Wednesdays about sports. Stuff that I actually enjoy, guys. I love sports so, so much that I cannot live without sports, watching anything about sports on YouTube, about any types of sports, guys. So they do uh, live on Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time, guys. Check them out because usually it's very fun time. I joke around a lot in there about different uh, sports teams, mostly about Detroit Lions, who are basically never won anything like the Browns. So, <laughs> but check, check, check them out, guys. Check, check, check them. Amanda <laughs> saying, oh, Amanda was here already. I, I think I missed everyone. So let me see who else I missed, guys. Harry Hamstone, see. I'm trying to put some links in the chat to subscribe for myself, guys. And I forget with a bad memory. Guys, I came from the bins today. It's I, I'm lucky enough I don't I don't forget that I have to do the live today. Even though, guys, you know, I could have slept in, went outside, got some kind of went to a party, which usually I have to go anyway after that live. I usually go somewhere. But I decided today, guys, since the eclipse is coming, I don't know if I'm gonna be um in condition to do that guys i don't know um who else i missed lisa i think i i missed everyone once again well i'm Is trying that... to get everybody lisa, oh, and his, uh chad just sent us a a a, a pity chad appreciate it man we don't have any professional assistance with anything <laughs> we need a professional assistance that's for <laughs> you all you all split a biscuit in the morning i love it thanks chad appreciate it man chad guys has been i want a whole one doing consistent videos for so long guys he needs to be at least around twenty thousand or more subscribers you see that's how life chad that's how life is not fair man i think that uh, all the great minds that do consistent work need to have some kind of you know I think YouTube needs to just, you know, do some other stuff, guys. I need. I think YouTube needs to step up their game and just uh, give the content creators uh, every month uh, 1,000 subscribers, guys. They need to change the policy and just gift everyone subscribers from them. You know, it's like, doesn't matter if it's artificial intelligence because, I mean, nobody watches anything anyway. So it's going to help out, guys. <laughs> For everyone, it's going to be great um let's see if i missed anything else guys we can talk about any type of reselling we got lori in the house happy picker i just finished listing a whole lot of bling there you go and kyle also most likely lurking kyle welcome i know that you're probably somewhere there <laughs> in the back watching lori doing something <laughs> without she had china... doing the listing <laughs> yeah big bro is saying without china amazon fails that's true not just uh, amazon big bro I think uh, Walmart and all other stores will shut down. If China decides, guys, to completely stop supplying, distributing any types of goods to any parts of the world, 
doesn't matter if it's United States or other countries. Uh, it's going to be a big economic downfall. Even from what you see right now, it's going to be even worse. So thankfully, guys, China still supplies everyone because China's work ethic is like, you know, people work for cheap. And uh, not just in China, guys, in uh, those other countries around, they got cheap labor. And the chi China, I think, is the cheapest, in my opinion. That's why a lot of that stuff comes from there, because they got the cheapest labor. So if they decide to one day say, no, we're not going to do anything and supply anyone. I don't know, guys. Me and Lisa will have to start some kind of YouTube channel about, uh, I don't know, We'll, we'll have no, to our own sweatshop. We gotta make our own sweatshop. Work that. We're gonna have to open some kind of pawn shop, guys, and just get I always, here. I always <laughs> wanted to run a sweatshop. I think I'd be really good. Listen, <laughs> you have to open some kind of pawn shop. Why do you do this YouTube auctions? I don't know. Like, open a pawn shop and just uh, put your merchandise in there. Doesn't matter if you have to pay rent. Just tell them you will and don't pay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to hang three gold balls outside my door. Just tell them you're not paying rent anyway, because tell them that, uh, like me, that you're an alien, and you <laughs> and you can get no everything. No speak English. Just tell them I don't speak anything, and start making some kind of noises so they will run away. I'm not gonna even talk to you. <laughs> Gino, welcome. Gino's yeah, finds in the house. Gino in the house. Um, yeah, but using AI to close terminals and replace sorters, crazy Home Depot CEO. Actually, in Cleveland today, we had the one store, Walmart, they decided they're going to remove um, self-checkout because of a lot of theft. Lisa, did you hear about that? No, you know, but if they're going to do that, they need to do it down here at the Canton one. They actually <laughs> came out and said they were tired of uh, buy customers stealing merchandise from Walmart. Because they most of them decided to go through uh, self checkout lanes or lines, whatever, and they were not paying. So they're gonna remove, they're gonna bring people back in, guys, instead of robots. So they see that's it's gonna prevent it's, it's so funny, like it's gonna prevent people from stealing at Walmart. <laughs> it's like, they're gonna have to teach them kids how to actually make change. I don't know. The cost of, of educating uh, employees might be too much. They might have done better just letting things walk out the door. <laughs> you cannot you cannot educate certain employees. It doesn't matter. As long as they get someone cheap enough so they cannot pay them a uh, certain amount of money, it doesn't matter if they know anything or not. Because, you know, like it doesn't matter if it is Walmart, Target, or any other big type of department stores. I mean, as theft has been happening already for so many years. I mean, there's a recently it was on the rise. It depends, of course, where it is. We had Dollar Tree stores have been closed down here locally, and the Dollar Tree actually was a good store, but now they're actually closing down, guys. They they cannot survive, guys, the economy. Where they have to charge people dollar twenty five. It was not actually a Dollar Tree anymore, guys. I forget. It was dollar twenty five cents. So they had to change their name to dollar twenty five cent tree. <laughs> we've got a dollar store at the end of the street and I've, I've not been there in eight years but it looks like it's still open Bobby saying I closed my eBay last week took SS and with my UPS pension I'm going to travel and live life limited on social security to make money so yard sales it is Bobby that's normal I mean that's actually you know it's I think enjoy what you enjoy man enjoy life man you know life is short man you have to enjoy it sometimes you know, but uh, with reselling business, it is it is a difficult business. Everyone, of course, you know, does it differently, and uh, have has a lot of other venues, you know, that they can kind of rely on. But uh, a lot of sellers who do full time reselling, it's not an easy game, as you guys know. Most of you already have learned by now. It's not easy, especially nowadays, especially where you live. So a lot of situations where it comes into effect nowadays. Depends on where you live. Depends on what kind of sourcing place you got around. So And what kind of connections. So Lisa told me that she may have some kind of connections, guys. So oh, I've got connections. Just what kind? <laughs> Gravity goods camera on the house. I think I mentioned Cameron. Cameron, welcome. Where is Jackass? Cameron, we need to know, find out 
if Matt was abducted, man, because every time every time he does lives, man, on his channel, I always feel that <laughs> that aliens are behind his door and they kind of take him to their spaceship and do some kind of experiments on him. So I don't know. But I, I cannot tell you where. <laughs> But it was done specifically, guys. Nobody knows why uh, or when Matt will join us, guys. That's a, that's a kind of a secret that we kind of have to carry, guys. We decided to do that for just uh, views. Maybe we'll make some money. Lisa said that if we're not going to start making any money on this live, she'll quit. Guys, so she told me... No, I'm going to get an on OnlyFans, not quit. Totally. I'm getting an OnlyFans. <laughs> Lisa guys said that uh, make me do it, people. Please so guys Lisa said there is much guess Lisa says there is much more entertainment out there than sitting around in this debacle talking about some kind of aliens and uh no Oh sales. we gonna talk aliens? I wanna talk aliens and ghosts and Bigfoot. Uh, yeah, I know you won't. <laughs> and the thing Bobby has been upset since he busted his favorite AMP. <laughs> I raised baby cardinals as a kid, and I'm a sucker for soft vintage teas. Yeah, guys, kids actually, in my opinion, that kind of stuff, I know that, um, you know, you have to learn about this kind of stuff. It, it's not all of it brings good money, but if you learn enough of that kind of antique sports stuff, vintage sports stuff, actually, that's a good market to be in, to niche down. My favorite word, guys, niche down. Uh, and uh, it's interesting, guys. That's kind of something that I'll, I'm interested in, so... So Kiss knows. Kiss told me that he'll give me some lessons for free, guys. He's not going to charge me much. Because he knows I don't have any money, so. <laughs> I lived in Cleveland in the 80s when there was a big earthquake. I had a water bed at the time. Yeah, the, I haven't lived in Cleveland in the 80s, guys. In the 80s, I think I was, um, how, let's see how old I was back in the day. Uh, 10 years old. I think, yeah, in the 80s, I was around 10. <laughs> so Michelle, I was a little kid back then. It was so long ago that I already forgot when the 80s were. I barely remember 70s, guys, because I was two. So being two at the 70s kind of um, grabbed a bunch of generational gaps, guys. So I don't know. It's kind of difficult nowadays, guys, to remember all of it. Tommy's saying I've been looking for Bobby. He's the only person good looking enough to replace Tracy. Tommy, you need to start uh, life as uh, Bobby then. Just call him and tell him, man. That we would like to start uh, live backup on Saturday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern time. We're gonna, uh, you guys, gonna talk about reselling mostly, so people can learn something at least. They will at least know what to do. I mean, what kind of things to buy to resell. It wasn't discussed enough on any YouTube videos yet. After watching 10 million videos, guys, there is not enough information yet. <laughs> about any type of reselling guys so we need to do more videos guys because we know videos bring money so we have to start doing them i'm gonna do more educational stuff coming soon guys about anything that i will think of so we'll just keep putting videos out maybe youtube will finally understand that uh, maybe they have to pay attention you know maybe there is some kind of useful information <laughs> only mike uh farsak oh, fg was able to wrangle him on schedule what do you have to offer him i don't know uh and you have to talk to Tommy. he said he will take your appointment man <laughs> any day <laughs> guys if you remember andy Sometha was our guest last week it was great life Andy actually showed up thank you andy appreciate yes, thank it, you andy thank andy, you very thank much. You very much just for you man i'll wear uh, if we get more super chest guests i will wear glasses <laughs> and just to let everybody know as soon as the camera went off, Andy talked a ton. He did. I swear I was there. So just so you know, he can't talk. Yes, we have <laughs> talked to Andy after the live for five hours. And he told us all the secrets about all the YouTubers and resellers. So we know the tea. Yeah, we, we had know, a tea party. Yes, we know everything about that. Andy said that he was on YouTube already for 40 years. So that's why a lot of information, guys. So if you need, Andy said that for the right amount, guys. <laughs> He'll sell you all the information, but it's not going to be uh, cheap. Guys, you're going to have to pay up if you want to find out about anyone. <laughs> and they will take, uh, he said he takes euros or rubles. He said, no, no rubles, guys, because they have no value. Euros or like uh, pounds in from Great Britain. There are some, uh, 
We got guys, we got special guest guest in the house finally. We got uh, Matt who said that he's an alien. <laughs> I uh, thought this was tomorrow. Man, it was tomorrow actually. I was lying again. I, I turned on my I turned on my in, TV. in Australia. It's tomorrow. I turned on my TV and you were on, and I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> man, man, that's normal, man, for our life to be like that. That's actually absolutely like one thousand percent normal behavior, man. I'm surprised okay. every week, man, that I'm here, and I is actually fell asleep, and I is woke it up just to not be wearing pants. Uh, pants, uh, man, during pandemic, PJs. man, during pandemic, nobody wore any pants. People used to do their job wearing some kind of underwear and uh, sitting down using Zoom. So wearing pants, it was extra. So I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna have to duck, duck out real quick in a minute and grab some pants. <laughs> man, just grab something. Uh, we got. We have to see Buster today. We're gonna have to see your meat cutter. So we're gonna talk about. Oh, you. We got. We got that right here. The my. Uh, oh, there's a box in the way. Man, you got. You got, oh, you got some pants on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that is just like me. Whatever. Hey, guys, this is the most unprofessional live, Matt. I mean, come on. Ma You're uh, here. Guys, That's all we want. Guys, good piece of advice. If you at your house, if you're a reseller and you have the same board cutter like Matt has, do not cheat on your wives. That's uh, because <laughs> if you do, guys, that meat cutter <laughs> man, this, may it turn into a weapon. I, I, look, I looked for one of these for like two years before I finally got one, and I knew it was going to be a game changer to save so much time. I love it. I I'm not kidding. Them. I got three. Yeah, they're awesome. So, Matt, for, for shipping, they're awesome. Matt, welcome, man. We, we were waiting for you since yesterday, man. So, this life has been going on already for almost 24 hours. <laughs> and we already on. we were waiting for you man we decided when you show up it's gonna be already solar eclipse so we're kind of already in time for for the life is that right today too? <laughs> we decided we decided man that uh since we're gonna be here or until solar eclipse it's, it's just on time that you showed up man it's right it, in between <laughs> is the solar eclipse today too no man, apparently I called in and asked when solar eclipse is at and scheduled an appointment, man, and on Monday. Apparently, solar eclipse will be on Monday, man. So I don't know. We have to kind of get ready. I don't know what to do anymore. I wore I was cleaning my glasses, <laughs> was trying to see if I can see anything, but I realized they are blacked out, so I cannot see anything in them. So I'm gonna have to wear just regular sunglasses. <laughs> So man, how you been, man? Well, tell us, uh, tell us about yourself, man, because a lot of people, most likely, who is who are watching right now, I'm I'm pretty sure most of them know you, but just for future, whoever is gonna watch this live in ten thousand years, um, maybe it's gonna be more interesting for them. I think so, you got something waiting to come on. Uh, I know we got we got uh, solar eclipse, guys, right there. <laughs> Yeah, Solar Eclipse actually decided to be a guest on this live. So we're going to ask Solar Eclipse some questions. Hey, hey Solar on. Eclipse, are you today? <laughs> Hold on, Matt. We have to wear. I cannot. Uh... <laughs> yeah, let, let's ask, let's ask oh. the guest if they're coming today. <laughs> Hold on, Matt. Solar Eclipse, how you been, man? <laughs> can, you, can you answer us, human beings, what time we have to schedule an appointment on Monday to see you. We have to call. Maybe Solar Eclipse has a cell phone number. <laughs> I mean, you can go to Solar Eclipse's channel and remind him like four days early, and then again two days early, and then again one day early, and he still might forget when he is. <laughs> so yes, Solar Eclipse know. is neurodivergent too. All right. Yes. Yes. Solar Eclipse is not co cooperating with us. Actually, I think uh, most likely what's going to happen is. The only place where you're gonna be able to see solar eclipse, guys, is probably on your TV screen <laughs> from YouTube. <laughs> that's gonna be that's gonna be something for you guys to check out. Check out Matt's glasses. That's actually man the proper ones that you're wearing. Those are I thought were 3D glasses from back. Remember back in the Back to the Future when 3D was wearing those glasses in the movie, and uh, was Michael J. Fox. I forgot the actor name, but his name was 3D. 
and he was a bad guy. If you guys yeah. watch Back, Back to the Future, 3D was one of the friends with Beef. You guys remember who Beef is from Back to the Future? Yeah, we all remember Beef from Back to Beef. the Future. Beefy. <laughs> Beefy, Beefy was actually a rich guy later on. He was smart enough to uh, steal information from the future, actually from the past, and went back into the future again. And 3D was dead by that time. <laughs> so, Matt, True. tell yeah. us about your background, man. How did you, how, when were you born? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're starting from what the beginning. Time were you uh, born during solar uh, eclipse, man? I was born in Hill Valley, 1955. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, I, uh, let's see, born in Las Vegas, 1977. Uh, been living in the Pacific Northwest since I was, before I can remember. Uh, live in Bremerton, Washington now. <laughs> and uh, I came from a 20-year sales career uh, selling everything from uh relocation services to internets and voips and clouds most recently uh to start doing this full time uh so i've been full time since uh, january 2019 uh just in time to uh get on unemployment before the pandemic <laughs> that's an interesting situation man that i think you were not alone in that oh, regard yeah. You were no, no, not. No. You were not alone. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, basically, like, if you if you've ever seen Office Space, my my end of days at my last job was kind of a bit like that. I uh, <laughs> went from uh, leading the company in sales in 2018, uh, going to our president's club in April, and then being laid off the following January. But mostly that was due to the fact we got bought by a different company. In that interval, that company sucked. They declared bankruptcy about two months after they acquired our company. And uh, so I'm like, I'm just going to use this smoke screen and just stop working and see how long it takes. And the answer is it took them from April to January. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I got laid off by my own hand, really, and then uh, started doing this. That's interesting background, man. Yeah. If you guys, if you guys are not sure who Matt is, guys, most likely most of you in the chat know Matt and have seen his lives every day that he goes live doing his shipping. And I always yep. ca always come around sometimes rarely now in the morning because I go to the bins a lot. So it's, <laughs> it's difficult for me to stop by because he goes live. In your it's actually your time is like in Cleveland, it's when you go live, it's around eleven a.m. And in, yeah. in your time, I think it's like around eight something, right? Yeah, it's eight a.m. Pacific every day. It's scheduled for eight thirty, but I—that's basically if I end up sleeping in or taking longer pulling orders, just give me that time. So I schedule it at eight thirty, but I'm usually live by eight. And then, uh, yeah, I've been doing that since pretty much daily for three years. Before uh, it was called Ship Show, it was Ship Mageddon, and before that it was uh, Biggest on YouTube. And uh, yeah, it's basically just shipping orders and sometimes other things. Yeah, guys, actually, if you watch how Matt ships, it's going to be a good example, in my opinion, the way he does the shipping and uh, what type of stuff he sells, guys. It's very interesting stuff, and uh, a lot, I think, in my opinion, that stuff that he sells, I mean, there are... Oh, he does this. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. He'll yeah, be yeah. Okay. Yeah, I usually aliens be. abduct me, man. Solar, solar <laughs> eclipse abducted me, man. But anyway, guys, if, if you know what I'm talking about, you've watched uh, Matt's uh, lives, and he's been doing it for a while. How long have you been doing YouTube already? Uh, YouTube I've been doing for four years, but I've been doing the shipping show, uh, in January, it, it, uh, crossed the three year mark. So three years and, uh, what, like a couple of months now. And uh, yeah, if it's a small, but dedicated following, very appreciative. A lot of people who sell paper, ephemera, postcards, uh, which is, uh, one of the, sort of pillars of my business and uh yeah it's fun 
you know, I, when I first was kind of getting started, I got a big shout out from Lonnie over to Shed Flips. And uh, he was like, uh, yeah, just don't talk about politics or swear a lot. And I break both of those on a daily basis. Yes. Uh, like, <laughs> it, like if I am not sharing my opinions or swearing, that is, I, I'm just not really being myself. So I was like, fuck that, Ani. <laughs> Man, that is true nature of it, Matt. I I agree with you on that. I will never I will never be able to do like uh, if someone tells me do not curse or do not do stuff that I kind of you know in my nature of doing that kind of stuff is tough for me. Yeah, to and... overcome myself to do that. I can, but I just feel like very awkward, man. I feel like I'm not me. Yeah, I mean, you do what you can, and then one day, like you know, FedEx loses your package, and it's all over. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's I tried. Terrible. I tried doing pre-recorded content for a while, and it's it was like, like either this has to be my job, making pre-recorded content, and I put everything into that, or I'm doing reselling. But I can't do both things, and I kind of made the decision to go the way of reselling. I feel like now, after a few years, if I wanted to do a successful YouTube channel, I could probably do it. Uh, I just don't have any desire to. <laughs> <laughs> At least Man, you're like, honest. Uh, the, way, the way you do your shipping shows are, uh, in my opinion, uh, you know, you got the crowd of people who show up and support you and, you know, it's, it's good. I mean, the thing about it is, you know, how it is. It's difficult for, in my opinion, it's not an easy type of situation for any type of YouTube content or lives or any, like, podcasts. I mean, everyone is trying to make money. It's not an easy thing to do. There are, of course, as you know, Matt, also there are channels that grew kind of big and they got much bigger following. It's going to probably uh, stay that way because, you know, uh, unless you do some kind of uh, content consistently with stuff that you do almost like on daily basis, in your situation, you're doing your lives. Uh, every almost every day you you do them almost every day right like I think uh, Monday Monday or... through, yeah Monday through Friday sometimes on weekends I was doing them on on at least one weekend day uh, a week but I've sort of pulled back from that um, just because I need the space I need to be out sourcing on weekends especially during the the uh, spring and summer months and it's you know I just need to like have that separate mental space away from youtube as well and yeah i mean it, i've i've been definitely enjoyed it uh it's it's a, been a great community i really enjoy the people who come in and participate on the the daily show we've had some amazing discussions over the past three years um had some you know i, I love the ability to run memes and you know, just have sort of inside running jokes. I do a, you know, different thumbnail every day. So there's a fun creative outlet. I've been a DJ forever. I, so I've been sort of incorporating the opening of each show with that. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's been nice to sort of unapologetically just do what I want. Uh, while I'm like, I got to ship it every day anyways. Right. So might as well turn the camera on have people share experiences. I do a what sold at the top of the show as well. So it kind of has everything. It has, you know, I, I'll do haul videos within the show. So, you know, haul, shipping, what sold, it's kind of got everything. So that's true, man. And you do a great job. And I wish uh, maybe in the future, YouTube will start kind of paying attention to uh, like people on YouTube, like content creators who are doing lives consistently. They're doing streams or like, uh, you know, podcasts to kind of bring the audience more. Because I think right now YouTube is more pushing out uh, just content videos compared to uh, streamers who do lives and stuff like that. Maybe if you do those types of streams, like, you know, for a certain amount of hours, maybe YouTube will start picking it up. But you still, it's not going to be an easy situation compared to people who just watch videos, you know, instead of watching lives. Yeah, uh, li lives is not the way to build a channel. Like I've I've sort of resigned myself. Like 
I've had the same number of subscribers. Like it's gone up or down maybe 10 or 15 for the last about 12 to 15 months. And I'm fine with that. Like I don't need to grow it bigger. And I feel like even growing it any bigger would make it more cumbersome and more pressure on me to do stuff uh, that I just don't, I don't need it. I don't want it. Like I'm fine with where it's at. I'm happy with where it's at. And I like that it's a tight knit community uh, of, you know, participants who all contribute. Like it's, it, yes, I turn on the camera, but the people in the chat, I've learned so much stuff from them. Uh, we've discovered bolos. We've just, you know, figured out ways to save money in certain ways. Like it's, it's really been valuable and I've, you know, learned other niches as well. So uh, it's, it's not just me. It's, it's all the people who, who participate. That's good, man. And you got, uh, you, you talk to the chat all the time and it's kind of fun environment. As, uh, I love lives. As you probably yeah. guys, you guys noticed from <laughs> me trying to go, try to at least have time to appear in like lives. But I mean, sometimes when I have to go to the beans or do some sourcing, I just try to go in and then I forget what the hell I'm doing. And then I just decided I'm not going to go I'll do sourcing, you know, because it kind of takes my attention away. And I have the attention deficit situation where I, if I do something, I will not do something else. So that's why. Sometimes when I concentrate on something, I do it. But then, like, if I do two things or three at the same time, sometimes it will take my attention away. So, but uh, like I said, the thing is, Matt. Uh, also, the good part about it, uh, people kind of uh, watch how uh, you ship stuff, certain products, and it's kind of props to you for you know doing those lives. Because I mean, one thing you can watch some videos from content creators, but when you do it live every day almost and show the stuff that you sell and uh especially you're mostly i think in your in my opinion most of the stuff that you sell is uh, mostly uh ephemera type of stuff and uh you also do you sell like electronic stuff uh, yeah that... yeah i mean I, I do ephemera and media i have shipped on the show like everything from like a giant 70s terrarium to a aerobic stripper pole to <laughs> like large pieces of art uh to yeah to, to smalls and uh you know i've got a pretty darn small carbon footprint i reuse most materials i i, I generate about one garbage bag or garbage can of trash uh about every six to eight weeks um so most of the materials that i use i i bring in get used and i reuse and repurpose just about everything uh i sell records the records that i don't list i lot up and sell as craft materials the sleeves i use as as mailers in poly bags uh i use pretty much every scrap of cardboard that i produce i use label backings as void fill like I, I generate very little trash for the a number of orders that i'm i'm sending out on a daily basis and that helps too because it keeps your cost of materials down as well so that's true and you repurpose everything because i see how you do so i actually started doing well i've been doing kind of same type of stuff i will repurpose a lot of things because i don't want to buy extra packing material so I will just repurpose a lot of stuff that I buy certain boxes. I will use the packing material from them. Some uh, the thing about those uh, bubble mailers, those uh, strips, that was actually interesting. I actually I don't think I they called they, they called me out on trash to cash for it. But it's, 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 I mean it's really not a big deal. Like this is a bunch of different stuff in there, but like pieces of bag poly bag there's the strips in there too but like i can mold this around a piece of glassware or something and it's going to do as good of a job as as anything you're going to buy and when the customer gets it they don't have to like go through it or it doesn't go everywhere like you know confetti shit they just take the bag and throw it in the recycling or in the garbage if there's plastic in there 
it's a lot easier and I'm producing less trash. And that's, it's all clean stuff. It's just shipping scrap. Yeah, that's good, man. Uh, let me say hello to Richard in the house. I need drop flips in the house. Richard, welcome. We got... Say Never had a complaint, Beard King. A Beard King uh, picker in the house, Alex. Uh, let's see who else I miss, guys. The metals, you know, I'm very behind usually, which is normal. Uh, yeah. I'm, it's I'm, kind of one of my things that I love to do, which is very unprofessional, but it is what it is. Okay, I'll uh, be right back. Man, bring Buster with you. Uh, Chuck in the house. Say, where are the kitties? Where are the yeah, kitties? Yeah, where's the kitties, man? We love kitties, man. Especially me, I love cats. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Back road, be there, Chuck oh, in the house. Chuck, welcome. Is it, is it Saturday know. already, Chuck? I think it's already. <laughs> man, the way weeks are going, Chuck, lately, the time flies, man. It's already like uh, April. It's just been New Year's. I yeah, we're old. Way. It goes fast. I have to call someone to stop the time, guys. So it's not going to go that fast. We cannot get older anymore, guys. I'm already too old. <laughs> you know, compared compared to Jackass, I don't feel so bad about uh, the petrol station. My beverages come in paper bags. That's my <laughs> void fill. <laughs> They're clean. They're brand new. And I go down to Walmart and I stock the the stock boys. I just did it the night before last. They hate me. But when they're doing the shelves, I'm jacking their boxes and filling my cart. They get so mad. <laughs> That's actually <laughs> well. Not, why it. am I going to buy them? They're recycling them. They're brand new. They're pulling out washing soaps because the seven by five by threes apparently are for like sponges. I'm not, and they're great. I'm not buying them from, I'm sorry, the boxery is great, but save our pennies, man. We're poor resellers. And exactly. yeah, the, the footprint, save the footprint. Lisa, I guys, I guys, I decided, I decided after solar eclipse, I'll use those for picking material. You will. <laughs> you all think he's kidding. He I mean, will. I'll rip. <laughs> you want to, like, the worst thing I think that people can use is styrofoam peanuts. Oh, and, God. Even like, the recyclable ones. me lose right? my shit. Send me a box with styrofoam peanuts. Like, it is the, or even just, like, most styrofoam is is the worst. And, you know, it. people still buy it. People still ship with it. I've received stuff from resellers off of YouTube that are like packed with styrofoam peanuts. I'm like, yeah, like it's like, uh, have you ever seen Jackass the movie? There's Man, a scene I love it. I love that. That's my favorite. The, where they spray the guy with mustard who hates mustard. He just l absolutely loses it. That's how I feel when I see styrofoam peanuts when I open it in a box. I would rather see somebody shipping trash any day of the week. <laughs> man, if I if I had a, if I had a ch if, uh, Matt, if I had a chance to bring uh, Johnny Knoxville <laughs> as a guest <laughs> in the future, man, I, I, I man, I have to give him props for that kind of stuff. Johnny Knoxville, I mean, all the crew from Jackass is just unbelievable with all the stunts they are doing and stuff that they were doing in the movies. It's just a lot of respect, man, because I mean, it's not an easy thing to do what they were doing is amazing i mean it's just fine i mean a lot of people find it kind of disgusting in a way but i mean that's what it is they were the kind of made their own genre they're in hilarious. A way. yeah yeah i mean they they there's a lot of stuff nowadays that uh like the eric andre show or like there's tons of of stuff that exists now that would have never existed without the Jackass show and the Jackass movies. Yeah. Parts like Jack in the house. Mike, welcome. I appreciate you stopping by, man. Uh, auctions. It is better to reuse anytime you have the opportunity. You're not just passing on a problem. Uh, every, Mike, time, are, every time you're reusing material instead of using new material, you are reducing waste. That, that is actually the thing. I I will if I get packing peanuts I bag them. Yeah. I I then I put them in a poly bag. I will put a piece of a label on them that says packing peanuts and then I will use those again. But I like opening a box with loose packing peanuts is a terrible thing to do to a customer. Yeah, I mean I, it's like you're being punked. I mean nothing'll yeah. burn you 
piss you off, really. Like I have some, and I put them in the real thin grocery plastic bags because we yeah. still get to use those. And then, yeah, you can fit it around. But I always notify a customer if I'm going to actually send them peanuts. But I do tell them it's in a bag. I actually got people that flipped the freak out. And it's like, I won't buy them. I just reuse them. But I feel guilty because I know how I feel if I get those damn things. And my my eBay listings also state that I will reuse packing material whenever possible. Like, so it's not like it's disclosed from the outset. I will do that if if I uh, if I send somebody label backing, it will usually get a label on the bag that just says this is just, you know, shipping trash to fill space. And there's only a few things that I will use that for. And it's usually glassware or 78 RPM records because it provides really good cushioning for those kind of things. Yeah, records especially, man. Records, I know you like selling records like me because I love selling records. And that's uh, sometimes, well, I still use those boxes I got because I got a lot of those vinyl record boxes back in the day. So I still have a lot of them left. If, I oh, gonna yeah. run, if I'm going to run out, I'll use the tactics that you use. Yeah, yeah. That, out. <laughs> that's these. These are the U-Haul 12 and 3 eighths, 12 and 5, uh, wait, 12 and 5 eighths by 16 by and 3 8 medium boxes. They are here. They're a dollar 26 if you buy them by the 25. Uh, they cut down to two record shippers, which is about 60 cents per. Uh, I don't have to wait for them to get shipped to me. Uh, and I use the off cuts, which are basically the long, uh, strips off the corners here. And they make, they're better at protecting records than the, the shippers that you buy on eBay. They're cheaper and they, you get extra packing material out of it as well. And they take like, I've been, I've been doing it for so long now. It takes me 10 seconds to cut one down. So. Yeah, that's true, man. But yeah, that's the thing. You kind of, by watching the lives, you can actually, if you guys watch Matt's live, I mean, I'll uh, you, right you will takes, see. It literally takes like two seconds. Just cut everything. Use a meat cutter, man. <laughs> yeah, well, for the longer cuts, not so much. So there's, you just cut it in half, take off the long panel. Lisa, I hope, hopefully, Lisa is laughing at the solar eclipse right now. <laughs> no, I'm laughing at auto, correct. <laughs> um, collecting, actually, Adni Drop flips, uh, Richard saying, Tommy, no one wants to co-host with you because you're on all night. So, guys, if anyone wants to co-host with Tommy Bernard, uh, Tommy is taking applications right now. You have to know <laughs> how eBay works. You have to know how YouTube works. Your minimum pay will be $100 an hour so it's not a bad thing if tommy goes all night guys can make up to oh, tommy yeah that's what his wife said. Dollars, yes. <laughs> also if anybody has tommy's mailing address please send it to me on instagram i have something that i need to send to him see there you go tommy if you want to drop your mailing address man for matt <laughs> he'll send you some boxes <laughs> from you line <laughs> oh we can do that <laughs> So yeah, the, that's basically what the record shipper comes up with. It's the per, two of these, perfect size, cheaper, co corrugated, better cardboard than, than what you're going to get on eBay or from whoever sends you shipping supplies. That's good, man. That's a good thing. That's a, a lot of information for that kind of stuff because I think like uh, if, if you guys definitely you're going to save money instead of buying those vinyl record boxes. It's actually a better tactic, in my opinion, to save money on those supplies. On those things, they're crap, and you never know what they're going to They're so inconsistent. I've had ones that are like, that show up just paper thin. I've had ones that are kind of corrugated. Uh, ones that have like folds where you can do one record uh, up to five, but some that only just have for the one even though they say that they're going to be for the five. And most of the time when you're buying off eBay, those are companies that are drop shipping. So they don't even know what you're going to get. Uh, no, that's true, actually. Some of them, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's a, it's a pain. 
Mike Fartzak Jack is actually absolutely right, guys. See, he will he was Mike is screaming at us all the time, guys. Thanks for screaming at us, Mike. I wouldn't show up if you invited me on professional ass show anyway. That is true. That is absolutely true statement, guys. That's actually what we live by is to be more unprofessional every week. <laughs> so we actually love that kind of behavior, guys. <laughs> So, uh, Matt, yeah, we're going to try to get Tommy's address for you, man, just in case you want to ship him something. He only accepts shoes, man. So if you don't have any shoes, don't ship him other stuff, like vinyls or any ephemera. No, I, 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 I packed up a VCR in a uh, padded flat rate envelope for him that has been sitting here waiting for like two years now. <laughs> In the back, in the back of the, uh, are you are you right now in your basement? Where is your like uh, shipping station? Is it is it in your basement or is it in the room? <laughs> oh, there you go, Dami. You have to just ship it that way, man. It's still gonna get there because Delaware only has five people living. That's there. true. That's true. So if you ship it, they're gonna find who Tommy is out of. Uh, it's easy to do. Five people in the state, man. <laughs> So, uh, so I'm I am in my living room or not my next to my living room. So if I move the camera, sorry if you guys. There's my front street. And there's my back door. Man, everything is open, Matt. So make sure, man, nobody comes in. It's, <laughs> it's, a, it's all there are glass doors, and that's a window. And my living room is on the other, like behind where the camera is here. That's cool, man. That's how you kind of put in your uh, working station in your living room, which is normal. That's how I do it. Well, it's next to my living room. <laughs> I, I list generally in my living room watching TV or YouTube. My dining room table is basically filled with inventory I'm about to list. Uh, most of my whatnot shows I do for my dining room table. Basement is storage. Uh, for listed inventory, and then I have one room upstairs that is uh, my unlisted inventory that I'm trying to like make no longer my room for unlisted inventory, but that's been a process. How much unlisted inventory? How many desk files do you have in your house right now, Matt? Tell us the truth, man. <laughs> uh, not a lot right now. There's stuff in my garage, and there's one room upstairs that I'm still kind of working through. But a lot of the stuff that's upstairs now is uh, supplies and like graveyard items. So, like bits and pieces of like vintage razors that I sell, or uh, briar pipes, and uh, stuff that gets gets put together with other things. Watch, you know, watch batteries, stuff that'll get. Uh, lotted up later so it's that's it's not really as much a death pile and it used to be it like i did a couple of tours of my my back stock year or so ago two years ago on like the three gringos podcast and on my channel but now it's down to like Honestly, like I could, the stuff that's not going to get reused, I could almost just take it to Goodwill and just be totally fine with it. Like I've, I've been down listing the, the dregs this last couple of months, just because like I'm towards the end of what I bought last year for listing and garage sale season hasn't quite started here yet. Like I was really hoping for today, but it got rained out and uh, and there wasn't anything good anywhere, so I just stayed home and kept listing the dregs. That's good, man. Let me say hello to Mikey Bags of Money. Mike, I appreciate it, man. Thanks for the for the message, man. I appreciate it. Um, and Jojo in the house. Jojo, welcome. And Matt, when you were not here, man, uh, before you joined us, Cameron and Salvador, South Mercado were very worried about where you are, man, because there you're like best friends man <laughs> yeah we're uh we did a a big huge flea market last year and it sounds like we're doing it again uh this year in may it's the end of may it's the packwood flea market it's like the biggest flea market north of the alameda flea and it happens twice a year and you guys <laughs> usually go together all the time or you, like, yeah, you me and cameron went two years ago sal was supposed to go but he had to mow his lawn 
<laughs> and you you're more important, man. I can tell you that mowing the lawn, man, is much more important than sourcing. I can tell you for sure. <laughs> I, uh, well, we all made it last year, and it was awesome. Uh, we, uh, I found a ton. Uh, we all found a aw- ton of awesome stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, definitely going back again this year. Maybe make some content about it. I couldn't go live last year because I was too focused on getting stuff. So, do you like to? Um... What do, what is your favorite place to actually find the stuff that you sell? I'm pretty sure you like to go to estate sales, most likely, right? Uh, garage sales, really. Uh, I, there's not a lot of good thrift shops around here. Uh, garage sales are good, but you got I got to travel out a little bit to find good ones. Uh, I love flea markets. Um, when when I can get to them. Uh, I really wish there was like a weekly auctions, li- like live auction space here, but those all died uh, during the pandemic, which makes me sad. Those were my favorite. Um, but I mean, a lot of my like postcards and most of that stuff is just online. Like I, I last uh, two summers ago, I went, and bought out every single antique store within about a hundred miles of where I love of postcards for whatnot. And they still haven't replenished yet. So I'm, I'm more not, sorry, big bro auction auctions in my area all died. Uh, live auctions anyways, but I still do like, you know, online estate auctions and, uh, you know, stuff like max old and things like that when when it's available but yeah i wish there was local auction houses still alive and kicking here but they're all gone and you are you close you're in um, washington state right so you're actually near are you near seattle washington or is it farther uh i am just a little bit uh uh west of seattle washington across puget sound so is i'm basically on the same geographic parallel as seattle just across water and I so know. If, like if you're looking at a map of washington which actually would be what like that wait that that there we go i'm on this part right so, so here's washington here's oregon here's california i'm on the the outer peninsula part that's, yeah, right that's right actually, Canada. yeah that's actually true very close yeah uh the ferry that goes to Victoria is about an hour drive from me. And if I, from Seattle, you can drive to Bellingham, which is right by the border in about 90 minutes. So. Yeah, that's actually kind of cool, man. So you can actually go to Canada and thrift. <laughs> yeah, if I, I want to get bugged about importing stuff. They stop you at the border if you got a car full of junk, unfortunately. <laughs> Man, especially a lot of ephemera, man, from Canada, especially. That's actually yeah, going to be. <laughs> they were just worried about me and all the Cuban cigars under my seat. Wait, what? Yeah, Lisa, why is Duncan also referring to your OnlyFans page? We actually kind of uh, not familiar, guys. Duncan, I'm sorry. Lisa's OnlyFans page actually is being sold on Whatnot tomorrow. So if you're gonna if you're gonna join her Whatnot, she was approved, so she will start selling OnlyFans page. So you guys can buy it. <laughs> I will say this is like I have done like flea markets in California and Colorado and auctions in, in both places as well. And it is it's I can source so well in some other areas and shipping is cheap enough that I can just ship home a giant box on the West Coast to myself. And it and still like. You can like ship a 50 pound box for like under 100 bucks, and there's so much stuff you can fit in a 50 pound box. Man, and, that's cool. and a flight to the Bay Area round trip is a couple hundred bucks. So, for like, I can have a full sourcing weekend in the Bay Area for like 300 bucks round trip, you know, minus my cost of goods. And that's almost worth it compared to like, you know, what, you know, people will spend that going to like a mile, you know, whatever highway sale or something like that easy uh i got people i know down in the bay or colorado i can stay with so it's i like 
going to other places for sourcing. Um, and the Bay Area has some of the best flea markets in the country, I think. So you Al also Alameda Flea is my absolute favorite place to go source. Uh, dollar bill, you old man, is, uh, I think you already answered it. He was uh, saying that uh, if you reuse the peanuts or throw them out. Uh, yeah, uh, we covered that. Yeah, so just I wanted to make sure because, you know, so I don't forget with my bad memory. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and thanks for the respect on the reuse. I, I reuse whenever possible. It just means you're not using new material and that reduces. That's actually good, man. So it's like thanks reusable. For, thanks for footprint. Yeah. That, uh, what do you think about that, Matt? Reusing stuff is actually better or it's not good to reuse packing stuff? I think reuse whenever possible. So that's, I guess, one of the things. And I do it also. So I think a lot of resellers do that. Yeah. As, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, don't send like dirty stuff, but like, you know, if clean material is clean material, whether it's chopped up into smaller pieces or pulled off the back of an envelope, or it's, if it's doing the same job, it's, and it's clean, then why use new material and not use something that already exists in the world? Yeah, that's true, man. That's why, that's why don't guys do not use dirty diapers or speaking material. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, if you get some kind of scammer that bought something from you on eBay and send it back to you for refund and put dirty diapers in the box, do not reuse. I, <laughs> I have used clean adult diapers as void fill before. And wow, man, that's cool. That's they were, yeah, you can get them at a, a state sales a state and all, find them all the time. And they're, yeah, they're like, usually they'll just give them to you. And they are good padding as long as they're not used. They come straight out of the package, not used. That's gross. But yeah. I would all admit for dishes, glassware, yeah. I have done that. Yeah, yeah I mean, Big Roy, Big Roy is for some reason is saying, but you're reducing your waste, not the customers. You are, you, are, you, you are reducing net waste. Anytime you use reuse materials instead of using net new materials you're reducing net waste and reducing your footprint if there's no reason why the customer down the road can't also reuse that for something yeah well that's true actually you know that's why a lot of that stuff and you know that's why I sometimes come in into Matt's life and always joke around and when i say i think amazon employees who do the shipping at amazon warehouse they have to watch Matt's lives <laughs> every day and learn how to ship stuff. <laughs> because... Happy Picker brings up a good choice. It would be weird if you got something packed in a diaper. I, I, it's not my first choice. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's diapers. It's kind of it depends. If it's some kind of dirty diaper, I would not use it, of course. <laughs> just well, and just... I've used animal pee pee pads. <laughs> I've gotten just, those. Dog pee are great. So Matt, what is the story? What is the story, man, behind your uh, YouTube name, man? How, why you became Jackass? Tell oh us. Oh my God, it's that's a long story. How <laughs> how long you want me? <laughs> like, you can if you 10 can. more minutes, man. We got we can it's, go we can go later today if people want us want guys put it in the chat if you want us to go. Matt, can you go thirty more minutes uh, after? I, yeah, I got. I'm, I was late. I got all the time you need. All right, so guys, Matt will tell us why he's Jekas. <laughs> it, it, it actually wasn't originally my my name, but it, I've been going to uh, the Burning Man Festival now since uh, first year was 2000. So this will be my 24th year in doing that thing. Uh, tw well, there was two years that, that didn't happen, so 22nd year. And, uh, you know, for in the early days, people would get, all kinds of weird, wacky, hippie monikers, like, you know, desert flower, some bullshit like that. <laughs> and uh, my third year there, or second year there, we were camping this guy, uh, or next to this guy, his name was Jesse. He had a piece of shit car that he had put this loud ass speaker on the top of and connected it up to a microphone and 
uh, a like remember those Casio keyboards? You could like say something into it and then play it on the keyboard. And you'd have like yeah, I remember. They'd also play like dogs barking cr- jingle bells and shit like that. Yeah, yeah, I remember old school. Yeah. So this guy, you'd hear him coming from down the street, and he would the thing he would say into the keyboard is just blowjob, and you'd just hear from like way far away on this loudspeaker blowjob, 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 blow, as as it gets closer and closer and closer and closer. And then through a megaphone out the side of his car, he just starts yelling at people and calling them jackass. And uh, one day, long story short, I was in the line of fire of that that thing. And uh, I it didn't stick then. But what did stick was the megaphone. And I started showing up to parties up here with a megaphone, yelling at other people, calling them jackass. And that's when it got turned back around on me. Wow. Uh, that was like 20 something years ago. Uh, so in the Burning Man community, that's kind of where it came from. And it's been with me ever since I tried to get away from it for a while. But then when I was starting this business, I was looking for something that was from a, I've got a, you know, marketing background, advertising background, something that was memorable, uh, a little bit cheeky, didn't take itself too seriously and it fit the bill. So I sort of, wrapped it around and used it as a, as a brand. And, uh, it's, it's worked for me. Like I get once or twice I've received a message on, on, uh, eBay. That's like, Oh my God. Uh, I got, I got modded off of primetime treasure hunters, uh, Facebook group because they said they don't allow swear words. (laughs) Uh, man that was crazy you know but it is what it is what not made me change my name because they said it was a swear word and it's by definition it is not a swear word it is a radio safe it is a radio safe word has been since the 40s when harry belafonte went top 40 with the jackass song uh but whatnot stood the ground. I had to change it. So now it's just Jack Retro on whatnot. So that's been the only, like that, like one or two customers uh, has been like so minimal backlash and the like positive reception of it, uh, you know, has been awesome. Uh, anytime, every now and then I'll get snarky with a customer on eBay and they'll be like, oh, you really live up your store name blah 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 and i'm like yeah you're real fucking original block <laughs> exactly man there are, there are so many fucking original people out there that kind of prefer to people uh, it's a two kind of you know in my opinion people are too soft like they're kind of getting to the point sometimes when there is if you use some kind of word where they think it may be a swear word or something similar they will shy away from it and never talk to you ever again that's it like a you bring that up like three days ago shed flips had in their video you probably saw it i know you watch everything they do and they were like somebody commented they're like yeah i love your show but sometimes the language is too much and i'm like and they were like what and i'm like (laughs) like shed flips makes vanilla taste bland like they are (laughs) <laughs> so, um, yeah i it's so crazy how like really bent out of shape people get about words sometimes and man but it's a nature met unfortunately yeah. man the true in my opinion like people who properly express their opinion how they want to be spoken about and like uh, speak out in certain situations uh, if they want to use a foul language, if they want to use it, that's fine. I mean, they want to kind of bring out certain, you know, uh, things out out there and talk about certain stuff. I mean, sometimes, you know, uh, you have to use certain words. And I mean, that's kind yeah. of, I don't shy away from it. And I know in reality, okay. man, it's just for the tube. Sometimes for the tube, man, you have to be like very polite. You have to be like very kind of down to earth and stuff. So you get a lot of subscribers, man. That kind of uh, nature of it. But, you know. You know uh, what I have to say about that is fuck that. (laughs) (laughs) Or screw that. Yeah. 
And yeah. I, I kind of don't try. I like, you know, people who kind of express their opinions with the words they want to use, man. It's yes. not something I shy away from. If person wants to speak out and not kiss someone's ass, I, because I hate people who kiss someone else. That's like one of the people, like that's one of the personalities that I don't like in people. When they try to go around and show them their not true self because they kiss someone else. But in reality, they will talk shit about their in uh, behind their back, even though they were kissing the rest like a minute ago, you know. So it's like something uh, that I kind of, you know, always question people on how they behave and behave in certain situations. You know, they will behave one way with one person and then turn completely around and behave uh, like different way with another person. You know, they kind of switch out and I kind of, you know. It's not the true nature of a person. They kind of becoming already a fake, right? Yeah, there. and I, I think that like, I think there's a lot of channels that like, you know, sort of whitewash the their content just out of fear that they're gonna maybe alienate some some viewers. And I'm of the opinion, like, I am fine alienating viewers like i would rather <clears throat> have a place where people can speak their mind have different ideas from me uh you know my channel my chat like i let people promote as long as they're contributing to the conversation they can say what they want if they have different views than me as long as they can support their views with some facts and links bring it on like i'm all for having spirited discussions from different points of view on anything and I, I, what I, the thing I don't like about YouTube is the, this, like, it, it's almost like a fear of your viewers. Like they're just going to turn you off if you say the wrong thing. And so you're always on eggshells and I see it across so many channels and the bigger they get, the more eggshelly they, they, more eggshells they walk on. And uh, I think that's it, it. What ends up happening is you sort of have this like very disingenuous, um, like you know, the whole fake reseller thing is like it. Yeah, it's fake because you get to see like this one percent of like everything that's happening because this it's so highly edited to try to appeal to the biggest possible audience as as it, as it can, and I don't think that's. I don't think that's overall uh, great for YouTube. I also don't think it's great for uh, this particular niche, uh, reselling in particular, um, because it's it. We've seen the results of this. Is that like people because they don't see the full story and they don't understand the full experience. A lot of people think it's easy. They come in thinking like anybody can do this. I can come in, turn a hundred dollars into ten thousand in three months, no problem, and not really see how difficult that actually is. Because you, what they, a lot of people not me when I first started seeing this stuff on YouTube, I didn't understand that either. Like I didn't get that. Like I'm only seeing this much of of this full view. And not a lot of the big channels do a really good job of getting their viewers to understand that. And that's frustrating. And I don't, that's not a conversation I'm real interested in participating in. I'd rather have a smaller conversation over here about like sales suck, why? Um, uh, say what you will about like, you know, there's, I, I get the criticisms about like, James over at my boring reselling life or Hayfro sells, but I think those guys actually provide really valuable things, really valuable uh, pieces of the conversation and also like a view into the struggle. And it would, because a lot of times this is a struggle and it would be amazing if, you know, not, not trying to like call anyone in, in specific, but like Commonwealth picker or, shed flips or even Cincinnati picker like showed some of the stuff and like how hard it can even be at that size and that scale. 
No, man, I can tell you one thing. Kevin, for example, I have respect for Kevin. because I, uh, I do too, and I'm not, like, trying to um, shit talk. You know, he is kind of, man, the thing about, sort of, like, you brought it up, man. But, you know, Matt, the thing about it is they specifically don't have to, man. Because, you know, yeah. no one is obligated to kind of answer for anything. It's basically, oh, it's basically agree. opinion of people. If they want to watch that kind of content, they will keep watching it. If they don't, they will unsubscribe yeah. and not watch it. You know what I'm talking about. So there is yeah. a, a lot of respect for a lot of content creators who started out their channels when they wanted to actually originally start them out and put a lot of hard work into growing it, doing consistent content. I mean, it doesn't matter if someone doesn't like it or like it. It's still not going to matter. And I, I always said it before, like, because people kind of, you know, uh, I, I brought out a great example originally way back when I started doing my lives. If you start this kind of content in Russia, for example, and you decide to bring in a lot of subscribers, it's not going to happen because a lot yeah. of people oh, in yeah. Russia are very, very opinionated. They're, they're not brainwashed and not in any fucking way, man. No, yeah, fucking, yeah. no one is fucking brainwashed there, man. They kind of, uh, you know, follow dictatorship in a way, but they're not brainwashed there are very smart people there so if you're gonna start telling them on youtube about some kind of stuff over there it doesn't matter if it's russia or europe somewhere this it's a completely different game man it's yeah. not gonna be that easy to gain subscribers it's not gonna be that kind of like it is here in the united states it's completely different mentality man it's like not even close to being the same because if you're gonna come up with some kind of cheesy stuff on your channel and bring it out to russian audience man you're gonna get blasted so <laughs> bad, like, you're gonna get cursed you're gonna have to block everyone believe me man i know because new especially right now new generations that's growing there man that's like uh curse word after curse word man they don't even like uh cannot speak normally like i was taught when i was growing up man you just get like a consistent like uh disrespect for anything it just doesn't matter right. not all of them but like like large large majority i would say so and, and i would say that like um and really like you know uh shed flips and commonwealth picker like they do i think they do more in bringing some stuff to the conversation than kevin especially like have the way that he has his specific topics built, he will build stuff around stuff that is really important and moves the conversation forward, or at least his point of view forward about that part of the conversation. Uh, Shed Flips just did the video a couple days ago, like, you know, listen up eBay. These are the 10 things we would change. Again, that's, that's probably a little more controversial than, than their uh, content usually would be, except for, of course, all the swearing that they do. Um, <laughs> but you know, there are other channels that sometimes just have good information, but really don't do a lot to invite conversation or outside opinions into what they're producing. And I get it that they don't have to do it. I think it's a shame is all I'm saying. I think that there's a lot of potential for this particular platform and medium to be able to do that. There's not enough places where it's happening. Man, that is uh, you. You're right, Matt. But don't forget, man. YouTube may will probably exist for a certain amount of years, probably in like I don't know how long. But uh, eventually, uh, this kind of content and stuff on YouTube itself, it's kind of replaced cable in a way. Right now, people are watching YouTube instead of watching cable TV. Like back in the day, people who were watching TVs, all those channels, HBO, Cinemax, all those Showtime whatever they are like right now they're still there but people prefer to kind of go to youtube because it's kind of every time there's some kind of content comes out about something not yeah. just not just in reselling a lot of other different um categories and this youtube kind of magical world as i say all the time and people kind of watch that even though when i speak to like there is generational gap like the younger generation right now watch TikTok. Uh, more in my opinion because of uh, the forms that TikTok puts out and uh, in my opinion that kind of may go away if TikTok gets shut down uh, because of you know why because of all the stuff that's been happening recently in the country and other countries 
and uh, that's why a lot of stuff currently even on a free country like united states kind of as of right now it's getting kind of uh, i would say uh, prohibited like uh, you cannot do a lot of stuff anymore like it used to be here in this country uh, way back uh, i would say as far back as you know it i, I mean uh, the generations that came to this country i mean it was always a free country where you had freedom of speech where you can speak out and do a lot of stuff now nowadays a lot of it gets shut down a lot of that stuff you, you know how ebay is even removing people's uh, items saying they're counterfeit without any fucking uh, explanation about anything they're not letting the sellers live and you know kind of sell stuff because constantly there is some kind of crap going on so that kind of stuff that's been happening already uh, not just now but for like certain amount of years and, yeah uh, i mean the reality is youtube as a platform in like 12 months is going to be nothing but like ai generated uh montage videos and loops of hypnotoad and like it'll kind of be a moot point anyways uh i i i i think in a lot of ways the the bubble for like reselling on youtube has kind of burst um I think it sort of burst at the end of the pandemic. Uh, the, I mean, the, just the number of channels has so decreased. Like, you know, what happened to Joey Bada Bing? What happened to Profit Monster? What happened to like so many other channels sort of disappeared as soon as like they weren't stuck at home and all they had to do was make videos anymore. <laughs> And, and it's it's unfortunate. Like there, those smaller channels, I think are are kind of where it's at. But uh, I I do enjoy some of the bigger ones. I just think that there's not a lot that um, it's hard hard to be an informed viewer uh, if all you're watching is some of those larger channels. Man, I know. Let me say hello before we continue to lose. Beautiful set, New England Betty Boop in the house. We said welcome. Sorry, as usual, I'm very impolite as, as always. So I'm really sorry about that. Uh, Lord, that well, mug. Who else I missed? Sorry. Uh, Marie was actually uh, Marie Pirolet. Uh, probably you know Matt. She is from your area. I think she's from Oregon. Yep, she's uh, uh, down in Vancouver area. Uh, Vancouver, Washington. Yeah. So that's like uh, it's not that far away from you, I think. Right. So. Yeah, I'm gonna be uh, headed going through there on Thursday, I think. So. Yeah, and uh, also I wanted to mention, guys, big bro auctions tomorrow. We'll be doing live auction on YouTube. Uh, so, guys, I think Lisa, I think it's 5 p.m. Uh, yeah, it's on... 5 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, guys, big bro auctions, Andy and uh, uh, Amber. I think Amber will be there, right? Also. I think uh, we're not Andrew. sure she's she's got things going on he he's still kind of up in the air about it but thank you for the shout out yeah so that's actually guys tomorrow at 5 p.m so join them uh support them because we're trying to kind of show support uh, to uh channels guys as you know always and well he just went to a live auction today and dumped a lot of cash and is bringing some of them goodies and going to be showing them off tomorrow. And he's pretty excited about that. Yeah, guys, a lot of ephemera, by the way, from Big Bro Auction, similar to what Matt is selling. So there is a lot of ephemera. I actually enjoy, Matt, a lot of stuff that you're talking about, postcards. And also I'm planning, guys, to do whatnot show. My first whatnot show with postcards. So I'm uh, not very familiar i know some of the differences but that's why i decided i'll do what not with postcards because maybe there is going to be collectors who will come in and see what i have and i will still be able to just move it on whatnot instead of list i can list it uh matt what do you prefer man do you uh, li uh, i mean are you approved on any live selling platform right now like uh whatnot or district yeah. or I, I had a whatnot ephemera sale yesterday i've been doing like one a week uh for the last i don't know two three weeks uh it's not my favorite it takes a lot of energy out of me um and i i don't like uh having to constantly source to like feed that beast 
I find it useful when I have stuff that I want to get rid of and downsize and I don't care what I get out of it because I've already made my money on it. Um, yeah. yeah. Other, other than that, like I prefer to not use what <laughs> I, I was big into it a couple of years ago, but I, I got to the point where I'm like, the, if I had just spent the time that I spent on whatnot listing on eBay, I would have probably made five to 10 times more. It just, that allure of instant money is, is a lot to get away from. And so now I'm just like, if I do a whatnot show, I, I schedule it like two hours ahead of time. I do no prep. I bring boxes of stuff down. I just start throwing stuff on I got a table. You. Yeah, that's actually what I'm yeah. probably going to be doing, guys. I will not be actually, uh, you know how it is. Do you join any type of raids, uh, like train raids no. or raid trains? <laughs> no, too much work. So, yeah, that's why I'm probably, because with my instability and inconsistency, I will be doing whatnot somewhere in certain time slot, guys. Hopefully, there is going to be people. Of course, there is going to be people most likely who will come support my couple first shows, which I really appreciate. But later Thank on, you. how many followers do you have right now? On whatnot? Um, yeah. Like 800, I think. Uh, so bad. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, like... I was do, can, doing for like how many active followers, totally different story, but I was doing two to three shows a week for like six or seven months in 2022, like summertime uh, from I think March until August. And like, yeah, I made a bunch of money on whatnot, but my eBay business totally like I totally felt it. Um, and for the amount of work and the return on that work, it just wasn't worth it for what I was finding. Yeah. Uh, by the way, guys, Lisette will be doing her whatnot tomorrow night at 9.20 p.m. So follow what uh, Lisette, New England Betsy Boop on whatnot. Uh, if you're not, I'm pretty sure most of you are. Duncan is asking, serious question, is ephemera better to sell on eBay on what or whatnot? I mean, it depends if you like making money off of it. <laughs> if you if you don't care, if you don't care what you're gonna get out of it, throw it on whatnot. Like I like I was selling I did like an hour show yesterday and I was selling like two and three pounds of ephemera for like three bucks and I didn't care. Like I wanted it out, any money back was like money that ha I had long since made my money on the stuff. Uh, but some of that stuff, like one thing out of there, I could go list on eBay for like 20 bucks. But most of the stuff that was in that auction is stuff that's been here for like two, three years that I haven't listed on eBay yet. So it, it's kind of at that point, I'm like, if it's, I also have ADHD. So if it if it has not happened after three years, that means it's not interesting to me, and I need it gone, and I need to bring stuff in that is interesting to me, and that's that's been one of the things that like I have struggled with with growing my eBay business is like not letting not letting a death pile grow. Uh, there was I th there's a video way back on my channel from early pandemic when it was uh, Froggy Flips before he got big uh did like show me your death pile and my garage was like packed to the gills literally there was a pathway from my kitchen to my couch about that wide that was just piled in with inventory that i had stockpiled getting ready to leave my job uh that entire room upstairs was full this room was full like i had, it was just so much so like getting to the point where i can actually i manage that well uh has been a struggle and it's an ongoing challenge it's like keeping this fucking room clean and <laughs> it, it happens for like a day and then it just is a slow spiral out until i'm like nope got it too far draw the line clean it up get it out so, it's by, the the way, cycle uh, of ADHD. by the way uh matt uh justin and marie they're from longview longview sorry i'm my bad 
Is that far away from you? It's 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 basically Vancouver. Okay. Kelso, it's Kelso, Longview, Vancouver are kind of like the little travel. It's it's a two hour drive south. Yeah, so it's a big. I mean, Washington is a big. Oregon is there are like big states over there next to California. One yeah. of the one of the big. Do you go to California sometimes to source? I I love sourcing in California. Yeah, I was I went down there. Uh, beginning of February, hoping to go to the Alameda Flea, but it got rained out. So I'm kind of like trying to figure out when my friends down there have uh, first weekend in February open so I can go back down. Uh, like some of my best finds I've ever found have been at flea markets in California. Uh, Interesting, yeah. Yeah, I found, I found a bin of IBM and Honeywell manuals to computers but they were the compu- the tape computers, the big ones that they yeah, used to have, like, yeah, like yeah. at the beginning of the Snowball Express. Yeah, also and, good. yeah. So it was a bin of those manuals. I got it for ten bucks. I was selling singles of those manuals for like two, three hundred dollars a piece because they don't exist anymore. Yeah, those Everybody. are really sought after, man. If you find those guys, pick them up, like certain yeah. connection sales. <laughs> and you know, and like so much like like at alameda flea you've got it's a great mix of stuff because you have like really high end like mid-century modern furniture but then you have the guys who just like bought a storage unit pull up empty it out and like you know everything is a dollar just grab whatever you want uh, you know or they'll clean out a house or whatever and every they're just like just get as much cash in as i can i don't care what it is just give me money and take it away and I, I have found so much stuff on just random stuff like that. Like, I love the flea markets down there. You know, we don't have that kind of culture up in the Northwest, unfortunately. What about thrift stores in your area, man? Tell us how the prices are over there. No, they're garbage. I don't go to them. <laughs> uh, there's, there's, so there with that. Is, okay, so there's one that is about a 45 minute drive from here. Uh, that is due west. And it's, I only discovered it last year and it's like, it's pretty fucking awesome. Uh, they've got like a free library out front where I have found hundreds of dollars worth of books, like law books, really good stuff. Found a Wu-Tang record sitting in their free library. Uh, that's interesting. So, Wu-Tang, man, that's good. Dude, Wu-Tang Twin Swords. It was like a $60 record that they were like, huh? I bought three weird owl records for a buck a piece. Like that doesn't happen at thrift stores anywhere anymore. Um, no man, not even not yeah. even here, man. We got like yesterday. I will do the live again probably next week. I decided yesterday I was too tired to do it from regular Goodwill and just show some prices on some stuff that is just out of like uh, I I cannot even explain. And I talk to employees because like it's not their fault. I mean, it's just that's how they told to yeah. do things. So it's not like they're doing it. Uh, the price, the person who prices things in the back, uh, apparently is smoking some kind of very strong crap, man. Some kind of strong shit. I don't know what the hell they're smoking there, but it's good stuff, man. <laughs> I mean, for, for me, the way that I like to source is I will go, you know, from place to place to place to place. But when I find the place that has what I want, it's I'm like honey badger. Like when I, I'm like, this is good <laughs> stuff. It's vintage. It's, you know, it's stuff that I know has value that I can resell. And they're like negotiating on price. They want it out. And that's when I'm just like, now's the time buy as much as I can get it as much as I can fit in the car. And if I can, I'm coming back. Like, and it's, it's the hunt for that place, that one place. And it's usually like garage sales or estate sales or the end of an estate sale. Um, When we went to um, me and Cameron went down to the Packwood flea market last year, we met this couple who was selling like new and packaged toys, like vintage stuff. They had like, vintage ninja turtles and hot wheels and uh man all kinds of stuff and cameron bought like 
a ton of vintage Polly Pocket, still new in the box. And I bought a bunch of Hot Wheels and just like totally random stuff. We both filled up our cars. It was at the end of it. I got their contact information and went back out to their place like two months later, filled my car again because like prices were good. And I mean, I'm finally now like on the very tail end of that stuff, but it's, it's all about just finding that right, that right place with the right prices. And then just, it's, I mean, lack of a better word, you're exploiting those opportunities to the max. And that's like, finding those places is what keeps me going out. Like I love like those little pockets of stuff. That's good, man. That's what the thrill, thrill of that kind of situation brings, man. Uh, like a lot of excitement for me, for me, for me also, man. I, it's like, uh, that's why I like it, man. That's kind of something in my blood pumps me up all the time man. to go look for something that brings a lot of, uh happiness to me you know like yeah. if i would be doing something else man i will not be happy that brings happiness to me i'm happy about it even though i'm getting freaking tired uh every fucking day man but i enjoy it man i get like so tired sometimes at the beans that i'm barely driving home already cannot even press the pedals man but that's I, also kind of like flea market. markets because like garage sales you're knocking on one door you go to a flea market, you're knocking on a hundred doors. And if you, you can find that one right scenario and you can get behind the table or make a connection where you can go to where they are bringing their stuff from those, which is like what happened in Packwood, those like you have a much better chance. I think if you're shopping right rather at, at a flea market, uh, or more opportunities for success in a, a scenario like that than just garage sale hopping. Yeah, man, uh, but it's all different for everyone, man. It's like same thing as uh, watching YouTube channels. Like a lot of yeah, yeah. Uh, some resellers would like to go to garage sales. I oh, actually I'm like it too myself. when we have them. Like yeah. uh, in Cleveland, I'm just talking about my own my own personal self. Like right. that's, yeah. In Cleveland, also we have like you know there is uh, opportunities. Thankfully, is that we have a beans close by and couple of them, and also some other Amazon beans, which I kind of was all, uh, also kind of you know cautious about getting stuff, even though I did in the past a lot. And so thankfully, sold a lot of stuff from Amazon beans. There weren't any issues, thankfully. And uh, you know. Um, it's a good thing when you you live in a city or area close by where uh, you can go and find other sourcing opportunities except garage sales because garage sales only happen continuously in the in the states with a good weather. Like uh, I mean, uh, unfortunately, Ohio is not one of them. I mean, and we kind of as resellers here try to find that kind of uh, inventory, and uh, a lot of resellers here end up, of course, at the beans because of how cheap stuff is so it's gonna attract resellers there but it's a different type of competition because when you go to garage sales you don't physically run into each specific reseller there all the time because everyone goes at different times I do. but when you're at the beans you go like from the beginning of the day almost till to the end and you basically see exactly the same resellers there all the time and they come there as a job you know so that's normal it's kind yeah, of that's hard to do here there's i mean you know it's april 6th there were like three garage sales uh i think i didn't freeze up today September yes, yes. for garage sales here so like that's not you can't live on garage sales alone in the northwest like there's just there's no way yeah there is no fucking way of that happening guys that's the thing about northern states a lot of a lot of respect to resellers in the northern states because of uh, limited uh sourcing opportunities especially no garage sales some don't even have estate sales in the winter or even spring or fall i mean only summertime and uh the good thing those particular areas do still have uh beans at least uh, for now we don't know actually guys how good will beans will turn out the business model of the good will always changing and uh, yeah. they may they may change it up and say screw that crap 
We don't want anyone going to bins anymore. We're gonna just start selling pellets. And they already Andy, Andy Sumeta is making fun of my giant Bubba keg. Yeah, man, that actually is very is that your logo on it? So yes, got, yeah, that's uh guys, that's a All limited edition, coffee. limited edition Matt's uh whiskey mug. <laughs> I, I actually just glued one of my refrigerator magnets onto uh, my <laughs> um so what how I forgot to ask you about your DJing, man, because I respect that uh, because I did DJing too, and I see what kind of equipment you use for DJing, so that's cool. <laughs> that's actually I love it, man. That's my whenever I have time and like we have parties, I will bring my I have uh, techniques, uh, even though it's a newer, um, it's a different model now. I used to do a vinyl record spinnings uh, mm -hmm. back in the day. So, when yeah. Uh, like a lot of other DJs did back in the day, which was very cool. I mean, yeah, I mean, I I kind of miss it, but I don't miss hauling around vinyl. Yeah, vinyl <laughs> carrying it around, guys. <laughs> I remember because my friend here in Cleveland used to do DJing, and he was a resident in the yeah. nightclub, and he would bring like he had like a case, man, and he would bring speakers. All the stuff into the club. <laughs> I had to set everything up, man. I remember it was like late nineties, early two thousands, and it was fun. But uh, I, he, he was very good in terms of uh, finding like very good records because most of it he did um, a lot of techno stuff and house music, what which was actually very popular uh, in the late nineties, especially here in Cleveland. I don't know if it was everywhere else. But uh, in Cleveland, it was very popular. We had the uh, nightclubs where, where where they mostly played techno house trends. Well, I mean, Detroit just, uh, was one of the like hearts of of techno and house in the eighties up through the early two thousands. I'm not, yeah, Ohio for sure. Man, we had like very good nightclubs here, and which of course throughout the years closed down because a lot of drugs started to happen and uh you know people were trying different pills and stuff like that at nightclub <laughs> and that brings back brings back Bro. brings back a lot of memories for me too man because you know some... Andy's comment is great roman only played the northern soul you hear it <laughs> see an insurance fraud dash can't put it <laughs> <laughs> and he's right and he's right and he knows what kind of music i like and he knows i, I like techno that. House yeah. trance music, which is I usually will bless that whenever I go to the beans man in the morning, I will turn trance on like house and I will bless it that everyone can hear it when I'm okay. arriving in the parking lot. Sometimes okay. I'll put Wu Tang Clan on or rap. <laughs> like I love long. house, I love techno, but fuck trance. <laughs> man, that, that depends. Yeah, it depends on what type of trance. Psychedelic trance was different, like different types oh of trance. God. Uh, I hate psychic, but that's also like my 20 years of Burning Man and being inundated with it every time I went there. So I, I mm. despise trance, but, but whatever, to each their own. I don't care if you like it. I'm just saying for me, no. <laughs> yeah, man. No, I, I, right now, man, with the music that's currently going on the last couple of years, like there are some decent music in terms of pop music, maybe like, uh, which I kind of, it's hard to even name certain musicians nowadays who actually produce and uh, make certain music which is actually in my opinion completely changed and uh, music of the 80s not early 90s the disco all the type of stuff was much better for me because i mean i kind of grew up at that era in a way and i listened to a lot of disco music a lot of pop which actually michael jackson <laughs> A lot of uh, Madonna back in the day, all those, uh, 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 what are you, Hall of Famers, Hall of Fame singers and stuff. And also jazz. I like blues, jazz, which actually also something that I like to listen to, you know. And rock, uh, which actually back in the day is a rock bands. You cannot even compare anyone right now to whoever is doing music in terms of rock right now. Man, forget it. It's uh, not even close to those legendary Bounce if, of the at it, yeah I, I mean i watch a lot of music youtube and all that stuff and if you look at like most of the the rockers of even like the 90s and early 2000s the the general opinion out there is that rock is dead right now like there's it doesn't it's not not for good it will never be dead for good but it's dead for now uh there's 
there's a lot of crap out there. Man, I'm telling you right now that, and by the way, look at this. I found a bolo, guys. Today at the bin. This is a cassette for someone who don't remember. But uh, if you guys can see on this cassette, this is Courtney Love from The oh, Hole. Dude. Yeah. Celebrity Skin is a fucking jam off that album. Yeah, this actually is worth uh, not like huge amount, but $20 for a cassette, used yeah. one. So if you see uh, Courtney Love, guys, if you guys remember who Courtney Love is, she was the wife of Kurt Cobain. You pulled the trigger. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think if he would have been still alive right now, he would have been like tops. Like he would have been like at the top of every category of rock, of punk rock. It's not I just mean, because they were punk rock band. And I mean, uh, I remember when they were starting out and uh, Courtney... So I guess uh, the hole, the, actually that's a good tape. So if you guys yeah. find hole. Uh, I'm, and, uh, I'm pretty sure Kurt Cobain uh, ghost wrote about half the songs on that album too. I'm pretty so sure, man. I, 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 100%, of course. So Liberty Skin off that album is too good to be written by Courtney Love. And it's, it's the if you look at the lyrics of it, it's, like out of a Kurt Cobain diary. Um, Patrick, actually, Patrick Murphy in the house flying by already came here five hours ago. Patrick, sorry, man, I didn't see your plane <laughs> in the sky. I think solar eclipse. Guys, by the way, Patrick Murphy will be flying on Monday during solar <laughs> eclipse so he can get a better view of the solar eclipse. So, Patrick, don't forget, man, to wear your solar eclipse glasses on the plane. It doesn't matter if you see anything, just wear them. <laughs> oh, but so yeah, man, it's not sealed, Patrick. It's used. And uh, I found um, today at the bins, there was like, they brought out new bins. And they brought out like a cassette tape. Um, it was just like a case, which was closed. And uh, the good thing it was closed, because usually when they bring them out, the case is open and all the tapes are all over the bin. So that mm -hmm. one was closed. And I opened it, I got it. And then... I found the only good tape that was worth reselling was this uh, Courtney Love tape. Other ones were not good, so that was a good uh, find in there. So, but it's not it's not new, unfortunately. Matt is saying Cobain's murderer. <laughs> like Matt is uh, saying Courtney Love gets killed, Kurt Cobain. So we have to find out. <laughs> we, we have to find out about that. <laughs> Patrick, also make sure to wear those glasses when you fly. Those are medical king. Because uh, I know the pilots probably going to be flying. Uh, it's actually interesting because there are going to be planes in the air. So that's going to be interesting. Is they going to see solar eclipse while flying? That's kind of cool. If you think about it. I don't know if you will be able to see it. So, Matt, where is Buster, man? How, why are you hiding Buster from us? Let me go grab him. He's probably asleep on the couch. Guys, we're gonna make we're gonna have special guest appearance of one of the greatest kids in YouTube world, Buster. You hey, make... my daughter's down here. And Lisa has seven daughters, guys, over there, all hiding, <laughs> all under the couch right now, waiting for treats. <laughs> and my kid is also somewhere hiding. <laughs> it's funny how you know I brush my kid Lisa He's all the time because he was asleep on top of his cat tree and I. Oh, oh there's Buster. Buster, what's up? What do you have to say for yourself? Do you help Matt? Buster, get it, get it, get it, get it. Buster do you help Matt with reselling business? Tell us. <laughs> Tell the audience, Buster. Come on. <laughs> Buster, I think Matt, he wants some treats, man. I think he's very hungry. He right always now. wants treats. He it's makes like the shreds for packing. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Man, if you train Buster, Matt, I think he will be able to help you out, man, eventually. My living room floor literally is just piles of uh paper bags because he just loves them so if i'm ever going to get work done he i have to have piles of paper bags to keep him occupied so that i can get work done man but how, you only have one kid right you don't have other no, ones. Two, the other ones on the couch oh, the, what's the other one's name uh windy lou wow that's interesting how did you come up with those names <laughs> uh, what's, the, what's the background of the names man so uh buster is actually buster wiley von laser farts uh the laser farts he had not the best digestive system when he was a kitten so that's where that came from 
uh, Buster is uh, a little bit Buster Keaton, also Buster from Arrested Development. And Wendy is from uh, uh, the song Everybody Knows It's Wendy, that song. The dun, 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 I think I remember. I, I don't remember specifically, but I think I listened to it some, you, sometime. You, know, you've heard it. you would know the song. Uh, so that's where they came from. How old is Boston right now? Uh, they're they're both they're brother and sister. They are eight. That's not bad. They're still yeah. young kids. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mine is nine. So he, he my daughter's th- ten. Yeah, he still thinks he's a kitten. Yeah, the man, they all think they're all kittens, man. Believe yeah. me, I know. Whenever guys have cats, they always stay kittens in reality. <laughs> they never grow up. They're like little babies all the time. And they need pampering and love and stuff like that. Because cats are kind of, you know, people sometimes might say like cats don't show love back to people. But in reality, cats actually mine. For example, if we leave, she starts crying, man. She will make noises. And uh, like she will walk around with uh, her toy in her mouth and kind of <laughs> make like noise that she's missing you and stuff like that. So they're actually, you know, they love their owners, and uh, that's how cats show, you know, love. And uh, yeah, I think I think a lot of people who who aren't cat people don't understand that. Like when they they you know they're like, well, whenever I go to like, hi kitty, you want to pet you? Blah blah blah. It's like that's not how it works. <laughs> like you, you don't get to like choose the cat that you want to pet. Cat has to choose you, and you just That's if true. you're chill, they will eventually come to you and be like, "Oh, this is a warm lap." That's uh, true, man. That's yeah. true. Actually, in reality, it's true. Absolutely right, man. The cats are like that. They kind of and, yeah. Cats have claws and they bite, but they also have limited forms of communication. So you know, just because they you know take a swipe or take a nibble or whatever that doesn't mean they're mean uh they just they're you furry know. toddlers yeah <laughs> exactly furry i toddlers. mean and lisa knows exactly what uh you're talking <laughs> about the seven kids which yeah. is unbelievable seven kids is like i don't know if i would be able to handle seven kids that's gonna be a challenge seven <laughs> kids are like one teenager <laughs> yeah. But I mean, uh, it's like you know, you have to kind. Of, it's interesting how they are. They all uh, like friendly with each other. Yeah, four of them are okay with each other, and then they're kind of against the other three. But it's just they tolerate one another because of the territory. Because because uh, you know how they are. They kind of mark territory, and certain ones. I, I think they also have like leader of the pack. You know? Oh yeah, so- that's my daughter. She's the alpha. So that, that is for sure, like leader of the pack, and that's actually what happens, guys, with kids, as with dogs, as with other animals. So that's that's, that's something interesting. And resellers. They were both sleeping. <laughs> Neither one was very happy oh, that they were woken up. There's Wendy. Oh, there she is. What do you have to say? How's reselling going for you? She, she doesn't have much to say. She doesn't usually like the YouTube channel, but she shows she does like the whatnot channel. Strangely. Yeah, that's kind of interesting, man. That uh, cats actually see cats. You see, man, that's the thing. That's why you need everyone needs to start doing whatnot, guys. Because if cats show respect for whatnot, that's it. They will not show any respect for any other platform, like eBay or Amazon or Mercari or Poshmark. <laughs> well, it's weird. My daughter comes in here when we're doing this, but when Anthony Dragon Master Fines has his whatnot on, she's nowhere in be found. I think that maybe she, I don't know, maybe she doesn't like Anthony's show. Who knows? <laughs> Sorry, Anthony. <laughs> um, so, Matt, how is your uh, implementation of your business uh, going to go in the future, man? Do you think you're going to keep doing a lot of ephemeral stuff or you want to transition to something else? yeah so the i've always kind of viewed the store as like uh kind of two pillars which is pillar one is like my media ephemera longer tail stuff that is that i've i've spent a, a lot of the last three years kind of building up that like baseline and it's consistent sales at this point uh as long as i sort of keep feeding it uh, it doesn't have to be a lot, but I mean, I built my store, it's, you know, 
just earlier today crossed 29,000 listings about 20 Wow, that's great. 29 <laughs> I actually forgot to ask you, is that on eBay? That's on eBay. 29,000? Man, that's crazy. Yeah. That's good. Um, that is about, crazy. About, about 23,000 of that is postcards. So just to be clear, but like <clears throat> pretty much like postcards are bringing in day in, day out pretty much like a hundred dollars plus a day at this point. And then the other side of the store is the stuff that's the like higher ticket items that are a little bit more difficult to list quicker flips, the electronics, video mm -hmm. games, the, you know, the garage sale items, mm -hmm. um, other collectibles that are maybe a little bit higher value and quicker flip. Um, so, and I think that like, both of those things for my business model, I can't, I can't, I would not be able to support myself if I was just all postcards and ephemera. Uh, and the amount of energy to do just quick flip stuff and to always be feeding that monster is too far, too much of a roller coaster and too dependent on like constantly sourcing. I don't need to constantly source. I can go on eBay right now pick a lot of postcards right yeah that's true and list that for the next m month or two months and be good and that's like off like a couple hundred bucks because i at this point i know how to what i'm looking for and how to buy um yeah and and you know days like today where you know we get rained out of garage sales i'm not going to be you know, screwed over because I'm, I don't have that kind of new inventory coming in. Right. Yeah. That's what, what would you say is it like for you, since you've been doing whatnot already uh, in, for, with ephemera, what would you say in terms of postcards? Uh, is it, uh, do you get certain amount of money that you kind of think you may get for postcards at whatnot show, or is it better if they will stay on eBay? I think, I think it, I mean, I, so postcards have definitely peaked on whatnot. I think they peaked right around late 2000 with the exception of uh, Popeye's postcards, which Popeye's like, he's a big, he, like he's most of the postcard sellers I know kind of got into it because of Popeye's postcards, including myself. Um, and, but outside of him, like for most of the sellers who sell postcards on, on whatnot, not all of them, but most of them, they're selling other stuff too, like other other ephemera items. And it, I think it really comes down to what kind of supply do you have and what kind of supply do you have access to? And uh, what, you know, are you more interested in quick flipping? Because you the, the money's faster for sure on whatnot. But... But for less amount, probably. Yeah. Much less, like... Honestly, for me, whatnot is best as a place to source. For uh, eBay, for yeah. eBay, or for Amazon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and like uh, either, I think, are worthless. Like, if you just you know go out and and buy p postcards or find postcards somewhere, and you don't take the time to learn the category, you're probably either a gonna not make as much you're not gonna maximize profit you're you're it it takes a while to learn it doesn't take that long to learn it's not like if you're getting into sports cards there's a lot more to learn about sports cards uh but you can get by with within the first like three to six months on postcards pretty well if you dive into it and commit yourself to kind of learning what's what learning the different eras and the difference between the topographical and non-topographical and like learning enough of like, you know, what, what sells. Um, and once you kind of learn that with postcards, like a lot of the stuff can adapt to other kinds of ephemera. Like uh, if you kind of have a good I, idea of what makes a thing collectible, you're going to be dangerous at just about every estate sale and flea market uh, you're going to go to. Yeah. yeah like, man, in in my opinion, in my opinion, and Mike, Mike actually, uh, Travis, welcome. Bartholomew in the house, guys. 
Travis in the house, guys. Uh, Mike actually said postcards are fun to learn. Yeah, man, I'm still yeah, actually are. learning about them, and I did buy certain amount to just see if have, I'm gonna like it. I'm gonna, but it's uh, it's interesting. There is like a lot of it. I think market is saturated even on eBay with a lot of postcards. But I would say the difference is is that people like Meta saying if you learn about it and like with any other category, and you know more. And then you can go to diff different uh, sourcing places and find really good collections and buy them probably cheap because uh, people don't want uh, most of people who sell, I would say, even at garage sales or maybe some estate sales, they actually don't know exact value uh, of, po of those postcards that they are trying to sell. So if you know something more than them, that's actually to the advantage, and then you're gonna find good collections. Yeah, I mean, and you know, it's not not just postcards, but like pretty much anything ephemera. Like, if nothing else, all you need to know: planes, trains, automobiles. <laughs> like those, like that that can adapt to just about any piece of paper that you find. That can translate into if you want to jump into uh, like um magazine advertisement cutouts like jiminy flip it that you know postcards brochures you name it casinos casino anything is always going to be collectible and always be sellable any platform anything like and you can find that you can find an ashtray at a garage sale that has silver dollar casino in Re reno for a buck you're going to be able to sell that for 10 bucks on ebay like dollar yeah, well, you know, brainer um, uh, places, yeah, places of states. I know the welcome to like I do have like um, good collections that um, I will see how I'm gonna do whatnot. Hopefully, yeah. uh, there is gonna be people who will come in and know uh, something about postcards. Yeah, you know, like, I mean, yeah, photography is another one of those categories that you can like the same thing that for postcards is uh, true for photography or slide you know, slides, eight millimeter film, twelve millimeter film, like all that stuff is going to be cross collectible is always going to be good. And people can say what they will about auction professor as well, but he puts out a lot of good information. And especially if you go back to some of his older videos, man, professor, actually, I can tell you one thing, Matt. professor actually knows a lot of stuff. Andy yeah, so will agree with that. <laughs> not, I, I don't necessarily agree with like his, his pricing model, but uh, I've learned a lot from, from that guy and his channel. And I've found stuff that I would have never known to pick up if I didn't watch that channel. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was talking about earlier when we were discussing some channels and stuff like that. And Andy was actually, was a funny comment about uh, Walter Blake Knobloch, my favorite channel, about him selling postcards. So guess uh, if, yeah. you, if you're not following Walter Blake Knobloch, who's very famous. Is uh, that personality. <laughs> Subscribe to Walter, guys, because he needs more subscribers, guys. Otherwise, all the merchandise that he used to buy at dollar stores and teach resellers on what to buy at dollar stores will go to waste, guys. So please oh, go wait, follow I, Walter. I, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, Rockstar Flipper got, getting into postcards was hilarious. It's, I don't know if he's still... I'm curious, actually, now... Uh, man, I, I think one thing which is kind of important to mention here, Matt, is that um, a lot of resellers, of course, they will be getting into different categories. Sometimes it's kind of interesting because, you know, I would not even myself expect, would I want to try to, because I do like ephemeral stuff, would I want to try to uh, maybe learn about it and try to sell it? Why not? I mean, I would try it and see, because I mean... If you kind of learn about all different categories, it's to the advantage also because, like, if you cannot find something at all that you like to sell, at least you will learn about some other categories and sell that. But, I mean, that's, uh, I think all resellers sell everything. There are, of course, uh, resellers who are niche down <laughs> to, like, specific things. But I think most of us are everything sellers, uh, in my opinion. So that's why Rockstar Flipper also. Andy knows that. Rockstar Flipper, uh, that's why he got his expensive car, guys, by selling <laughs> postcards. 
So uh, I mean, it looks like he's up. into is he's into sports cards now, but that's whatever. Uh, he he. It's postcards is like is one of those few things where number of listings is important, like because it's such a widespread and varied collectible. You want to have something for everybody, and you want them to find as much in your store as they can because they're going to go spend money elsewhere where they with somebody else. So you like having a lot of listings is important, and I I I get a lot of people who are like, who wants to have all these listings I have to manage. It's actually not that tough if they're all the same thing, but yeah. And, uh, uh, Mike, a rock, a part like Jack is saying, Rockstar Flipper sells uh, postcards for two dollars free shipping. That's normal, man. That's yeah. actually right in the ballpark. He also <laughs> no, like if you look at his listings, he has no fucking clue what he's doing. Like, <laughs> man, I think he doesn't have a clue of all the stories that he yeah. sometimes puts out on his channel. That's another. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah. He he also he and he he when the thing that I just said, like you have to take time to learn the category. He did not do any of that. He was just like, I bought a bunch of postcards. I'm going to start listing them, with no idea about like how to keyword, how to title, like. And sure, you can do that. Like, and I think most people, when you start doing it, like. Shout out Casey. <laughs> Man, shout out to Casey, guys. Because you know, we cannot give shout outs to very big channels on this channel. But Casey, guys, is very important because without I can tell you one thing, guys. Without Rockstar Flip, I mean I cannot even pronounce. Without Rockstar <laughs> Flipper, Rockstar Flipper, guys, you would not know any fucking news around eBay, around any reselling. There, there's gonna be nothing. It's the world will go under, guys, if Rockstar Flipper will not do any type of uh, stories on his channel. So tomorrow, guys, I decided I will also do stories now. <laughs> I, yeah. You can do stories. Can we shout out the Humpty Dumpty reseller? We're going to shout out Humpty Dumpty today. And uh, by the way, we got Vintage Ivan in the house. You're actually a big fan, Matt. Vintage Ivan is in your life all the time. So Ivan, welcome. Yeah, definitely a big, there, I mean, there are a lot of people. Fart Sack Jacks in here. And Mike is in your chat a lot. A lot, a lot, of, a lot of folks. We Thanks got uh, Amber in the house, Treasure Scavengers. And I mentioned, guys, tomorrow is going to be auction. And tre and uh, Amber, Treasure Scavengers will be in an auction with Big Bro tomorrow, guys, at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Did you ever do uh, YouTube auctions, Matt, before instead of whatnot? Yeah, before whatnot, I did a couple of YouTube auctions. Uh, I would, I did one on Who's Tom Cruise channel back in the day. Remember well, I remember that? him. Actually, I haven't seen him. In yeah, a long time. yeah, I think he's off of YouTube now. I think he's back into the like flea market racket. Like that's kind of where he came from. I think he just was doing YouTube w pandemic times. Right. Um, yeah. I did a couple of YouTube auctions. They were good. Um, and like that, uh, it was sort of like the test to see if that kind of thing could work for whatnot. And honestly, like, uh, Popeye took, took it and ran like he, he's, he's got the ability to source way better than I can and has the stock to be able to do something like whatnot. I can't keep up with that. Like from not only just a sourcing standpoint, but also like uh, the amount of, I mean, really the sourcing standpoint is what it comes down to is like, I, there's no way I can source enough postcards to feed a whatnot machine on a regular basis. I tried and I couldn't keep up with it and also list on eBay. Interesting. Yeah. That's the thing. I mean, it's like you have to, Especially when you do it by yourself too, because you yeah, you do person. everything by yourself, Matt. I mean, kids kids don't help you much with reselling, so it's <laughs> like you're you're on your own, and you have to do a lot of stuff at the same time, man. And we're not getting any younger, so the older you get, the tougher it is, guys, to do all that stuff. So I applaud all of you resellers full time who are doing it by yourself. It's not an easy task, guys. So if I can I can tell you for sure. I mean, some of us actually spend so much time without any freaking like any type of breaks 
And I mean, it kind of takes a toll sometimes, but it is what it is. We enjoy it. That's the most yeah. important part, guys. We enjoy it. And uh, thankfully, I mean, uh, we're going to keep enjoying it. Hopefully in the future, hopefully eBay uh, will change up a little bit. They will bring also live selling to eBay eventually, which I think will happen. And uh, it's going to go from there, guys. So, Matt, any last words today, man, for our beautiful audience? What was what, yeah. what would you say your trick? Your Before favorite... that, let me, let me just address the comment that's on the screen, and then we can get into last words. So that one cool thing about postcards is that you you can buy find an album out there at an antique store or a garage sale that might have several hundred dollar it's happened to me many times where i've uh, it happened to me several times last year i bought a, a postcard album on uh, e, uh, uh estate auction and there was several cards in there that sold for a hundred dollars or more i've sold i sold a card last year for five hundred dollars i bought it at a flea market 10 blocks away from me um and like there are it happens more often than you would think and uh that's one thing i i really like about it you're not going to see that happen with sports cards like with like at a yard or a flea market or something like you know fifth lake new york postcard somebody isn't going to think that that thing's worth anything but i find it i know that fifth lake i can sell for 100 bucks like that because they they don't exist so they do exist but they're hard to find um, there are real photo postcards of stuff that like the right subject matter can sell for huge money. Um, and as far as the auction professor goes, I, I think it's, it's unfortunate that his channel has kind of moved away from like, uh, like information about specific things to like deep dives into certain kinds of collectibles to sort of like the controversy that surrounds eBay and YouTube and all that stuff. That's exhausting to me. And I, I wish it wasn't that way, but, uh, and I, I think that most of the criticisms that exist about his channel nowadays are totally valid. <laughs> um, Man, that is true because sometimes you will watch. I mean, I, I maybe watched a couple of his videos in the past and some of the stuff he was saying, man, that's because I do kind of, I'm not brainwashed by this, uh, you know, reselling content creation video stuff. And, uh, I can tell, I mean, sometimes when you watch certain things like right away, you will have a feeling that this is done specifically to attract uh, audience to the cha to the video, and you know it, he that's why his channel has grown because of you know certain information that he provided and it kind of brainwashed a lot of resellers. Yeah, I I, I don't like the bitch fests like, and uh, and that's true. I think for any channel, I you know. He has, he has a lot of knowledge and has a lot of good information, and I wish it was uh, more of that. And, but I also get, like, the, it's like what we were talking about earlier. It's like, that's not the stuff that gets views and subs. So that's it, you sort of, like, poison the water because you're appealing to the lowest common denominator. But uh, that's the thing about it, Matt, is that people who are not resellers at all, and that's a, that's a point here. The major point is, uh, people who are not resellers at all whatsoever. There is a large majority of those people around uh, the county, mm -hmm. so they will watch just will watch some kind of video, just for entertainment, man, because they just don't watch any TV or cable. So they will just subscribe to certain channels they love. They like the appeal of certain people, and they will just watch their videos and the content which basically is not for them to learn about reselling. It's just for their entertainment purposes because basically, you know, it's just what they like to watch. It doesn't mean that they kind of have opinion about what the resellers do on a daily basis. And if it's a true situation or if it's completely bullshit, then someone is just putting, you know, misinformation into their heads. They wouldn't care about it. They will still subscribe because they just watch. They like the person. And that's what's important for them. And whatever he's talking about, it's kind of irrelevant because they will just subscribe by just watching that person. They don't know him in real life. Oh, totally. And, you know, yeah. they don't know who the heck this is. They just subscribe for the entertainment. And the, the vast majority of resellers 
who are true resellers, so daily resellers, full time. Of course, they have their own brain and they know that the only people who actually they can trust in their decision making is themselves. Because that's how we are, man. We kind of watch something, but we have our brain in our heads and, you know, head on our shoulders. And we kind of want to make decisions about our business, you know. And we're not going to kind of rely on certain information on YouTube that you're going to watch and follow it. Because we already kind of know it. But people who people who subscribe to channels and just want to watch for entertainment purposes, there is a large majority of those. And, I mean, if you look at it, it's like, you know, the, it's sort of like the inverted pyramid of like, you have like your appeal to your mass audience and cross genre channels. And I would say like Harry Tornado or Tucker Upper. Yeah, that's... examples of those who are like, like a lot of their viewers don't do any reselling at all. They're just no. there for entertainment. And then you just kind of get down into like your more uh, focused stuff. And then it just kind of sort of niches down, niches down, niches down until you get like hyper focused channels as well. Um, yeah, man. And they don't the is, at the mouth of that, you don't have a lot of critical viewership. Like, like, and there's not a whole lot of um, like uh, responsibility or integrity of those channels to reveal that this is just a segment right i think tucker upper does a really good job of doing that like uh, of explaining to his cut like the audience like this is not it this is like a little piece that you guys get to see this is not the whole thing there's a lot of work that goes into this i work 80 hours a week versus someone like and i'm not trying to talk trash like harry tornado where there's no like pulling back the curtain at all, it's just all flash. Man, that is true. That is absolutely truthful situation. For people who are blind, that's gonna be always the case. People who are blind and just don't care about it, they will just watch and for their own entertainment purpose and just kind of say, Oh, we love that guy, he's so amazing. We wanna kiss him on the lips, we wanna hug him all the time, we're gonna give him presents. But you know, that's how people are here. Very nice, man. I can tell you one thing, man. The United States of America, man, has the most majority of the nicest people ever, ever anywhere in any. You cannot compare anywhere else, man. Yeah. You go to Europe, you go to anywhere else, Russia, maybe some countries in Europe, but people are really nice, man, because you know it is what it is. That's how they were brought up to be nice, and you know that's how they show it, and that's great. I mean, there is no nothing wrong with it. But you know, Harry Tornado, for example, man, he oh, no, care. not Harry. He doesn't, he doesn't care about what anyone says about him. He knows tomorrow morning he will wake up, he will gain ten thousand more subscribers. Yeah, he's gonna go, I... he's gonna make more money on his video because he that's what he does. That's what I... he was basically trying to do. Oh, to I, 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 I watched that guy come up from like the early days when he was like doing logos for Cincinnati picker, like the, the, the which is great. I mean, good job. I, what I'm saying is when you have a platform like that and a voice like that, and you are leading people to the, a point where they're going to make changes in their own life, you do actually have some level of responsibility. Uh, having a voice doesn't mean you can just say whatever you want. You do have a level of responsibility to inform people, uh, especially if they're you're giving them information where they're like, oh, it's just as easy as going to the Goodwill bins with 20 bucks and selling it on eBay for hundreds. Uh, that That's not going to happen every time or isn't going to happen necessarily where you are. Uh, I don't see that kind of um, acceptance of that responsibility from some of the very large channels. There are like, I think, like I said, I think Tucker Upper does a pretty good job of doing that. Some of the other larger Kevin Commonwealth picker, I think does a pretty good job doing that. Um, it's, but when you're getting that huge audience appealing to the lowest common de denominator, where you think that you would have more responsibility to be transparent on some of those things, you actually have less transparency, the higher up you go. Yeah, man, that's the thing. And, and that's what makes a difference. That's why a lot of channels who, like I said before, who provide content, uh, just consistent content, 
definitely if uh, you cannot even you know right now i would say people will still watch a lot of different content who love reselling content it's like me like i love asmr so i will subscribe to a lot of asmr channels man because i like it i like this stuff so it's just kind of brings me kind of enjoyment to watch because uh, you know it's kind of different but i mean it's kind of interesting but uh, similar to reselling like you know it's some people a majority of people love those types of videos where people go to garage sales they will show them finds like prices all that type of stuff which is kind of what happens but i can tell you one thing it was much more in my opinion easier to grow the channel when you if you would have started let's say in like say for example uh 2000 uh like 14 like 2015 and of course man if you would have been with like would have been much less competition in terms of content creators definitely if you would have been posting consistent videos after videos most likely yeah you would have been grown your channel would have grown you would have had a lot of possibly subs people would have watched your videos consistently because they would have already get used to you so they they see you constantly on the screen you bring out your videos like three times a week some some of them have like two or three channels right now so they're constantly in that world of youtube where people see them so people kind of already right. used to them they kind of enjoy uh, watching their videos doesn't matter if they some of them like that person some completely hate that person they, but, but they still watch it and that's the thing that i was talking last week about where i watched this russian guy who is there he has so many haters so many haters and he does daily daily streams there are so many haters and they still watch him for so many years and they still send the money the funny part is they still send them super chats in a good amounts for and then they just put in hate messages towards him but still watch him every day which is just unbelievable man it's just sometimes it blows your mind but at the same time it's not surprising man that's why i would say people who are on youtube co constantly they have to have some kind of thick skin because especially if they have a family if they have children which is very important uh, fact because if children uh, are involved also with the channel for example and there are so many fucking creeps out there which mm -hmm. you kind of want to kind of smash their head in because of the stuff they like sometimes put in the chat or comments and unfortunately the those types of content creators want to continue with that want to do their videos want to continue with their stuff knowing they have a family knowing they have children something that is for some other content creators it's not that easy psychologically when they have a is their own themselves on the youtube by themselves without family that's when they can take this kind of they have to have also like six skin to kind of you know answer haters and stuff but when there's family involved man that's completely like very like i would say um it has to be on a different type of level because you know uh that it's very close to you it's kind of uh you cannot make a fucking separation of your viewers or subscribers and you have to choose you want to choose your subscribers or you want to choose your family who do you want to protect more of course you're going to protect your family more out from those those fucking creeps all the time who fucking post any bad comments about your family and stuff and they're all keyboard fucking warriors because they know <laughs> they don't get any reper repercussion about anything they can say whatever fuck they want you're gonna block them but then they're gonna come back with another account and do the same thing you're gonna block another account they're gonna come back with another account because there is no repercussion and that's why i i can tell you uh youtubers with families who put out their family out there and do the videos where all families kind of in agreement to do that that's actually unbelievable man i can tell you that's props to them because a lot of youtube um, content creators will not be able to involve their family in it's gonna be difficult because they have values, oh, yeah. they have values they have value family values they don't want any fucking creeps uh, talking about their kids who the fuck knows who is behind the screen and what kind of thoughts they have about different things man that kind of you know creeps me out sometimes and i just sometimes get pissed off don't want to think about it man because like it's, it's amazing yeah it's amazing that anybody does that like uh, i i mean i don't have kids but 
I man, that's putting your kid in front of like an audience of like you know eighty hundred thousand like on YouTube with that's a you got to have a lot of protections in place to make that a safe thing to do. So, I, and mad respect to the the ones that do it successfully, like. But I can tell you, Matt, one thing, you know, the YouTube itself, like if you think about it, man, uh, because, you know, it never, it never gets discussed that much because, you know, we kind of, you watch your own stuff that you like to watch your own type of channels and re even some reselling content. I also watch reselling content and I chose, I can tell which people are legit right away by watching their videos. I can tell how people are and then mm -hmm. I can tell what kind of uh, channels are completely illegit it's uh, just a kind of normal word for me to put it at because you can tell man but uh, will they care about any criticism over anyone who is doing a live or podcast will they speak out about them they people will speak out will they care about it no man because they know tomorrow they will wake up they're still gonna have oh yeah, uh, yeah. Have a, uh, a thousand more subscribers they're still gonna make money on their videos because they're gonna still putting out content 100 percent it's it's uh, it's important for them that their life man they chose the lives that they want to do uh and it's difficult for some other content creators who kind of like me that i don't put out consistent content sometimes i do sometimes i'm not yeah and will i be able to involve my family no fucking way man Mr. Uh, doesn't no care that i way. think people's taste like shit i mean it's it's, it's <laughs> It's it's difficult, man, and that's why, like I said, I applaud for them who have been doing it for so many years with their entire family and doing it like even by themselves uh, who are doing YouTube also get a lot of haters. And they still kind of survive and do the videos because there is no repercussion from any side. So it's like all kind of words blown into the air and nobody gives a shit because one time you sit at a certain show at the live, you can get a bunch of like uh bots or whoever comes in some kind of spammers or like you know whatever start putting up crap into your chat and that can happen anywhere man unfortunately it's not just on youtube i mean it can it, happen on, on whatnot on any platform and uh that's that's how that's the world we live in man and uh you know it is what it is so matt any last uh words today man before we leave yeah list every damn day yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's it all right guys once again uh, please you didn't get to listen yeah we're not gonna <laughs> rent. we're gonna we, if we if me and matt will start ranting no. about youtube world guys it's gonna take us about 24 hours <laughs> to do that but yeah enjoy it i mean everyone has their brain in their head and they want to watch whatever they want to fucking watch nobody's gonna tell them any different yeah, and I'm, I, you know, I, I threw out a bunch of names as just examples of things. I, you know, I, I followed Harry Tornado. I've, I've followed a lot. I, I watch a lot of reseller content on YouTube. Really, right now, the like, what I'm really into on YouTube is uh, Taskmaster, the uh, British panel TV show. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. Check it out. It's fucking hilarious. It is awesome. Um. <laughs> There's yeah, and also, also Matt, uh, just, uh, for free. Yeah, Matt, just uh, I can tell you one thing. For me personally, man, and I will always say it, like uh, there is going to be certain channels, which I, like I said uh, already many times before, which are amazing in terms of, uh, doesn't matter if it's a reselling business or any type of other business. If you want to kind of learn the ropes of it, where I kind of put out true, in my, in my opinion, resellers who are, have done it the right way and have been doing it uh, the right way for a while is Pete Craigless Hunter, who has been kind of, you know, uh, he started out with different business. He knows the businesses. He knows how to run a business. He can explain how to run a business properly. And it's not like joking, joking around when you do business from home or somewhere else. Uh, and also, you know, different aspects of different businesses on his channel, even with entertainment purposes or not. I mean, but that's a channel for me. I mean, I said it before. I think uh, Tufts, for me, like I would say that's going to be Tufts him. And uh, I wish Ronnie Hart would come back uh, with his channel because he was very legitimate uh, YouTube personality. And uh, 
and uh, like uh, uh, there are other ones that I like and uh, you know but I would say as an example whoever wants to watch reselling content if they never watched any reselling content I would recommend Pete Craigslist Hunter and right now also uh, John flipping in easy Josh Galt is another great very good personality there are a lot of good ones I, yeah I so I would <laughs> I would take those guys with a cha- grain of salt, but there, I think that if, as long as you're balancing the, that content with something else, you're they're good to include in the conversation. <laughs> That's true. All right, guys. So, uh, Matt, I put all the Matt's uh, information in the description, guys. Uh, please subscribe to Matt's channels, uh, Matt channel, uh, Jackass Retro, guys, uh, and uh, follow him on Instagram. I, do, I know that you don't go to Instagram a lot, right? <laughs> what makes you say uh, that? I kind of noticed. I kind of. Yeah, kinda no noticed, idea. I kind of <laughs> noticed man, that uh, you don't go to, uh, to read your Instagram. Uh, I don't. Like, but if, if you want to reach me, you come on to the live show every morning, eight a.m. Monday through Friday, Pacific time. Uh, and dollar bills, you all are saying. I feel like this life was about yeah. as unvarnished and real as anything I've seen. Really appreciate it. And the community that is here as well. Dollar bills, you all. I'll see you tomorrow at the Beans. So, guys, we're going to have a meetup tomorrow with dollar bills, you all. And uh, everyone else, guys, uh, Chad uh, Wolfman's goodies. appreciate the super chat very much. Guys, happy Solar Eclipse Day on Monday. Don't forget to wear. Don't forget your glasses, yeah, and you want to wear two to wear. here. <laughs> Guys, don't forget to wear something that you cannot see from. <laughs> don't forget those, man. Don't forget to wear your glasses while you do your shipping show There's, on Monday. There is no eclipse in the here. We are yeah, so far away. Northwest. Yeah, there's, yeah, and it's probably going to be overcast. I could look straight at the sun with no sunglasses and be fine. Guys, if you want to watch uh, solar eclipse from the state of Washington, you have to go onto the crane, the highest top of the crane, and use binoculars. <laughs> Maybe you'll see it. <laughs> yeah, probably not even. Yeah, it, so... The transit is... Uh, so I did get to see the one that was in 2018, because that one, the transit was through, basically like straight over Medford, Oregon, and... Uh, which is not far from here, but this one is like on the other side of the country. It's like from the northeast down through Texas. So it's, I'm not gonna see shit. You, yeah, you man. Uh, I don't right? know, Matt. You can use a parachute, man. You can actually go up in the air. Maybe you'll use like you know one of those big <laughs> binoculars that you can see from the west coast onto the east. But uh, guys, just for the Matt, we're gonna contact Solar Eclipse on Sunday tomorrow and ask okay. Solar Eclipse to make an appearance. In the state of Washington, just in case. Have a (laughs) check on Instagram. All right, guys. I appreciate you all watching. Please subscribe to Matt. I'll put his channel in again uh, into the chat right now. We have 26 people in here, uh, guys, who sticked out with us with this long uh, train that again went down the the rabbit hole in Alice in Wonderland, guys. With the mushrooms, <laughs> psychedelic mushroom, mushrooms, right, and, oh. and drank the funny little potion bottle. Guys, do not do not take mushrooms on Monday when you watch Solar Eclipse. You will not see something that you want to see. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah, yeah, thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for having me. It was fun. Anytime you'd like me to come back, just. Uh, let me know. Give you a three days notice, three minutes notice. Guys, we, next time we're going to invite Matt, we're going to send them an invitation through registered mail. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Re, um, remind me to give you my phone number so you can text me next time. Matt, <laughs> yeah, please give me a phone number. I'll, I'll give you my phone number so we can that, call each that, other. That will increase your chances to a good 50-50. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, that will hopefully increase my chances to do anything that I want, finally. And talk to Matt on the phone. Hey, now. Uh, and Slim Flippers are here. All right, guys, I appreciate you all watching. I put uh, Matt's channel in. Please give him a sub, guys. Definitely genuine guy. He does good su- good lives. And uh, you can learn a lot of stuff from him by watching his lives. And his and, angry uh, guys, And not we'll... just from me, from all the other people who are in there, too. So Exactly. That's true. Everyone has their own great personality and a lot of knowledge that comes to our lives, which is very appreciated. All right, guys, we'll see you next week. Our next week's guest will be Flipping and Easy, guys, John and Jenna. 
So Ooh. you guys are familiar with them, most likely. And we'll see you next Saturday, guys, if solar eclipse won't destroy us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, guys, we'll have to wear glasses before we say goodbye. Lisa, you have to say your line. All right. Hey, y'all come back now. You hear? Guys, y'all come back Thanks, now. Everyone. We'll see you next week, guys. Bye from Cleveland, Ohio, guys. And Happy have a selling. great rest of your weekend. Take care, everyone. I. Oh, he bounced.